Hey everyone and welcome. Happy Sunday morning. So usually my husband Tom and I do a morning walk and talk and we do it live on Facebook, but it is very smoky here in Northern California today. The air quality is really bad. So we knew we couldn't go outside. And so I said, well, I'm just gonna start um, after my shower, start doing batch prep. And then while I was in the shower, I thought, hey, I have a good idea. We could actually just talk to everybody live while I'm working in the kitchen. And so we knew we could oh, go Tom. Outside, and so I said, well, wow, I could really hear myself. The sound, um, the sound is sounding loud to me. I'm going to adjust it. The sound is sounding loud. And so we decided, hey, let's do it. And so I already started while Tom was um, getting all the camera equipment and lights and everything set up. I was already um, starting my prep. Uh, because as you know, we have a live show later today at four o'clock and I have some prep yet to do for that. And um, so, and Tom hasn't had his breakfast yet. He just realized he didn't eat breakfast. So for those of you who don't know us, I'm Tammy and this is my husband, and, Tom. And, and I'm Tom and I'm over here doing all kinds of electronic stuff. Sorry, I, I think the sound is okay. I do have the uh, am I supposed to talk now? I do have the chat feed going over here. I'll be going over and checking that, watching it when Tammy's doing stuff. Uh, if I'm over here, know that nobody's watching the chat, but I'll, I'll go back over go and back. check it. And You'll need to turn that around. Yeah, and probably, it's possible too. that one of our moderators, did we text our moderators? Yep, didn't tell them. We're so sorry, moderators. <laughs> this was just like we didn't get to do our Sunday morning walk, and so Tammy said, I've well, already said all that. Oh, well, I had earbuds in my head. Okay. <laughs> So anyway, I'm going to go back and do some final stuff, and you're going to start in on something? Are yes. you going to like get right into it? Yes, of course. Okay. What else would I be doing? I heard you talking about my breakfast. I said that you have. You just realized you didn't eat breakfast. I forgot to get, get breakfast, but maybe I'll make my breakfast when she's done. It'll go good with onions, huh? Mm, not really. Okay, all right. I'll let you get to work. I'll go man the okay. camera. Okay, so for if anyone is watching that's new to our channel, we're Whole Food Plant Based. And Tom, do you want to turn that screen around? So is it distracting you? A little bit, a little bit, because I'm looking at it instead of looking at the camera. Um, and so uh, we share all about our whole food plant-based lifestyle. Uh, we are also, um, we cook without oil. We're oil-free, super healthy, and yet the food is incredibly delicious. So um, at least we think so. And so uh, we also have a blog, nutmegnotebook.com. So I would encourage you to hop over there and subscribe to it as well. And we have um, hundreds of videos on YouTube. And then we have a ton of recipes also on the blog and many that we have not made YouTube videos for yet. So this afternoon, I'm actually going to be interviewing Glenn Mercer. He is the author of this new book that just came out this week called Food is Climate. And I am going to be making a recipe out of it for tofu chorizo stuffed jalapenos uh, from my friend Tiffany Wilkerson. And she moderates for us on this channel. I also have some recipes in this book. Um, and so we will be interviewing him today at 4 p.m. Pacific time. So it would be lovely if you want to come back and join us for that then. So for the... Um, tofu chorizo stuffed jalapenos, I have to press some tofu. So I have my tofu press out here. And I don't know if we have this on our Amazon page or not, Tom. Um, this is the Tofu Express. Can you see if we have this on our Amazon page? I'll, I'll take a look. Gina wants to know if you drink peach juice all day long. I don't, but here's the thing. I had I didn't have a chance to have anything to drink yet this morning um, because I usually have a drink after I get back from our walk. And I didn't have time to make my hot tea because I was busy getting started since we decided to go live. So I thought, okay, I'll just make beet boost and I'll have it this morning instead of this afternoon. Um, but it is delicious and I did forget my straw. So when Tom, when you have a minute, maybe you can grab me a straw. So okay. this is the Tofu Express. We do need to um, press this tofu just to get the water out of it. This is Wildwood Organic Tofu and uh, it's extra firm. The recipe calls for extra firm and it also calls for pressing it. If you don't have a tofu press, 
Whoops, this is really watery. I have a Misty waste Blue basket. Wants to, Misty Blue wants to know if you have any trouble keeping your tofu press latched. Um, no, I haven't. I haven't had any issues with that. Do you have this brand and you've had a problem? Just so you know, you guys, I keep a, a waste basket. I'll just show you. I keep a waste basket beside me when I'm cooking because that saves me from running back and forth to, I usually keep it under the sink. So the tofu just goes in here and the particular, the Wildwood brand comes divided into um, halves and some of it, you know, will come as a whole. But we like this because Tom usually has just um, half a block at a time when he makes a soup or something. And so this works out good. So it has a spring and you just push this down and that is what is going to cause pressure onto the tofu and then um, the water will come out of it What's the name and of I'll it be again? able to, to drain tofu express. Okay. It's the, it's the one that I like. I've had it for years and it works really, really well. Yeah. There's one similar in here, but it's not exactly like that one. Not exactly. They may have changed the model because this one's actually quite old at this point in time. So I'm just, while I'm doing some other prep here, I'm just going to let this do its business. And Tom, I'm actually going to go over there to my potatoes next because I need to get those in the oven. Okay. Let me so, figure out which camera I'm going to want to use for that. Okay. Um, I think I'll move this one around. So um, my... Um, I'm going to put you on here for the moment okay. while I do that. So Ooh, I don't, that's going to be so really I, close. Oh, well. I'll, I'll. <laughs> <laughs> the people like me, but, you know, they really don't want me in their face. Okay. All right. You're, you're, you're on camera. Okay. So my batch prep is going to be just a little bit different today. A um, couple things have happened. One, our double ovens are broke. So the repairman came yesterday and of course he has to order the, is it a board? A circuit board. A circuit board. They knew that when they, when we called the, the um, service call in because the error code came up and Tom went online and looked up and it said, you need a new board. But of course they didn't bring one with them. They wouldn't take my diagnosis. They had to have their own. Yeah. So, um, so they have to order that. So I don't, my, my big ovens are out of commission today. Normally I would bake all my potatoes in my um, convection oven because I can do three racks at the same time. Thankfully though, I have my Breville Smart Oven Air and I also have my um, Ninja toaster oven. And so I'm just gonna get those started. And I've actually preheated this one and I've already washed my potatoes and so now I'm ready to get those in the oven. I usually, this is how yeah, I usually, okay, this is how I usually do it. And you can move around. I usually, okay, I'm gonna come over here. I usually start with my um, potatoes first because once I get those washed and on the trays and in the oven, I don't have to do anything else. And Tom, since you're right there, would you start that oven? And I think I'm only gonna do 375 on it. On, are we baking? Yeah, and set it for um, an hour. I think that's what I'll do on that one. And so I'm getting my Ninja toaster oven. Tom's preheating it. I already have my Breville going and I'm going to bake these. So set it so, for one, one hour? Yeah, set it for an hour. I'm just going to put the Yukon Gold potatoes in there. Also, I usually do my salads but we had a really crazy week this week and we have like six salads left over that didn't get eaten and they're still perfectly fine. So those are gonna last us until Tuesday. So we did not, um, we didn't do major grocery shopping this week, yesterday, or actually last evening. We just ran to Costco and picked up a few things that we need just to get us by until next Thursday. And so, um, so we didn't do major shopping. So I am just going to, um, be kind of winging it today. Everything's going to look a little bit different. So I got asked the other day how I prep my potatoes 
and I had to get them washed. I couldn't wait and wash them for when you guys were here. I had to go ahead and get them started. But all I do is I use um, tepid water in my sink and this OXO vegetable brush. And I'm pretty sure this is on our Amazon store. So Tom will link to our Amazon store down below the show notes. It's but in the show notes. It's now. in the show notes Just already. Just the Nutmeg Notebook. Nutmeg shop. Notebook. It's Amazon.com forward slash shop s h o p forward slash nutmeg notebook so and i just scrub them with this and today the yukons were pretty clean but the sweet potatoes they have just been filthy lately so what i have here is this is actually the air fryer rack out of my breville smart oven air and i have just lined it with a silpat mat which is just a silicone cooking mat and I learned that little trick from Chef AJ because this gives me more capacity than if I use a baking sheet in there. So I just, I'm going to see how many I can get on here and bake these. I've preheated the oven to 400 degrees. We'll put that long one there. I think I'm going to be able to get them all on here. I might have to scooch them. Oh, there we go. How about that? So these are Hannah yams, and these are Japanese sweet potatoes. The Japanese sweet potatoes are my favorite. My second favorite would be the Hannah's. Tom really likes the Hannah's. The Hannah's are oftentimes more moist than the Japanese sweet potatoes, and, but the Japanese sweet potatoes are a bit sweeter. So it just kind of depends on what you like. And the Hannah's are, all, all, both of them are like cream colored inside. Question, Tom. Uh, Misty, uh, and it's 1922 Misty Blue, one of our regulars, Yeah, uh, is asking, how do you keep your feet from being tired after all the standing in the kitchen? Okay, so I have these um, kitchen compression mats. I can't remember what they're called, but these are to help with fatigue. Also, I cute shoes too. Yeah. Also, <laughs> I, I have, Do you have uh, your toes we don't, off? we don't wear outside <laughs> shoes in our house because I just don't want all the germs coming in. So we have shoes that are designated just for the house. Um, if I'm going to, if I know I'm going to be standing in the kitchen for um, a few hours at a time, I will oftentimes put on a pair of house shoes that are, uh, very good tennis shoes just to keep that but these are like orthopedic shoes tom i'm going to run over to the breville because i need to get these in the oven oh okay ah. she's on her so way so i'm on my way okay and like i said I've so on the, on the tofu press do you think it's faster than just pressing it with like paper towels it's like probably it well if you're pressing it with paper towels you still need to um or just let me get this in here what am I not doing right? Okay, I'm going to have to take that rack out because that rack is messing with me. We're going to zoom in and see what your, this is, the, this is a real life challenge. I told okay. him on the thumbnail. I'm is, actually going to just set this in here. Tom, don't let me forget where I put that. Okay. Because that rack is hot. So here we go. And then I'm just going to put these in here. And so those are all going to fit. Oh, we can even see the screen. And... This is a good little camera. I want convection. You're at four, 375. I know. I'm going to bump it up. It's because I had it open. And I'm going to um, bake them, roast them. I have it on bake style. Uh, bake for, um, I, well, I'm going the wrong way. An hour and 15 minutes is what I usually like to do. So this is why I like to start with the potatoes first, you guys, is because then for an hour, I don't have to mess with them. And that way I'm freed up to go do other things and they'll just bake. Now this is gonna go in the Ninja. So this is the um, broiler pan, I think they call it, or baking pan for the Ninja. And I don't have a Silpat mat that fits this. So I have just taken some parchment paper and then I'm going, these are some Yukon Gold potatoes and they didn't have Yukon Gold potatoes at Costco, and we only did one-stop shopping yesterday. I'm just gonna grab my paring knife. Now, for the sweet potatoes, I never um, pierce those because I don't want all the yummy juices to run out, but the Yukon Gold potatoes, I do use my little paring knife, and I do stab them each twice because they can explode on you 
in the oven. I have had that happen. So I'm just going to kind of spread them out because the more air that can circulate around them, the better. And I believe this is preheated over here. So I'm going to come over here working around my camera lights and I am going to put this in the oven. Now you can see you don't have nearly the clearance in the Ninja Foodie Pro. No, let me drop down and have a look at that. That you have in the um, Breville. And that's why I did just the Yukon. I'm losing my heat here. Okay. And that's why I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling pressure. You should. <laughs> uh, it's on 55 minutes now. I think that'll be okay. I'm going to check them. Um, I was going to do... I, this, since it's so close to the heating element, I think this might be. You have it 365 instead of 375, or is it just still preheating? No, it, I had it set for 375. Go ahead and, and push temperature and reset it. Okay. This is reality YouTube. We already said that. We did. Okay, there we go. So that should yeah, be good. Yeah, it must have got bumped. Maybe it did. All right, so we're good on that. Now, since I'm already over here, I'm going to go ahead... And um, I'm going to cook this corn Okay, so let me leave. in the pressure cooker. Now, we bought this at Costco. This is organic corn on the cob, and it comes already trimmed. I'm, I'm going to go check for questions on the... Which I love. But, um, and then I just, you know, wash it. Just cold water. Still missed some of the little silk on there. I'm going to get some water. <clears throat> Carolyn says that they can't get um, such nice sized potatoes. Ours are real variable here. We scored good sized one last week. So. Yeah, you um, just here, never know. TS has a question. Yeah. Her potatoes, potatoes always have lots of eyes. Do you cut them out or peel uh, where they are? If they've started to kind of sprout, then I'll, what I'll do is I will just take a spoon and I use the edge of the spoon rather than a knife because I don't want to cut into the potato. I'll just use the edge of the spoon to scrape off the eye if there's a little bit of an eye there. And that works really well for me. And I have a little bit of a different hack. He does. Um, I'll, because this is a little corner here and it's a, it's a tighter corner than a spoon and it's a thinner piece of stainless steel, I'll grab one of Tammy's fancy you know, fit in the bottle uh, measuring spoons, either this little one or, or the uh, what is this size? The half, half teaspoon. Because of the corner here. And, and I can hold it and I, I just pop those eyes out with this little bit of corner on the cup of the spoon because it gouges in just enough because eyes are recessed where they are in the potato. And so I just can flick them out with that really easy. So Cool. Because it's a thinner metal than the spoon so it, it cuts better. So uh, we usually eat, we eat so many potatoes. I don't even know. My head might be cut off here. We eat so many potatoes that... Um, You're going to come down the I don't know. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> We eat so I'll many potatoes that they don't, they don't often have um, a chance to grow Oh, eyes. yeah, good thing you're ducked down because your head was cut off. Okay, well, <laughs> the spoon would have been on camera. That was what was important. That was what's important. Okay, okay. so I've already uh, rinsed these with cold water and pulled off uh, most of the silk. You can see I missed a couple, but they'll come off after they're heated. So I'm going to cook these in the, this is a milky six-quart, and I can do all eight of them in here. So I have, I have the rack that comes with it. I have that in here. And then I'm going to add, you can add a half to a cup of water. I'm going to go ahead and add a cup since we're going to be so busy that I might forget to check on these. And then I'm just placing them in there on top of that rack. That just keeps them out of the water. We don't need them to be waterlogged. And that's perfect. We can actually, in the, um, in the eight quart, you can do like a package and a half. And I'm going to get rid of that tray. Don't need that. Um, TS then, is asking, um, on the, back it up on the potatoes a moment. I'm sorry. Remember where you left off. I cut you off. The TS is on the bake mode, yes? You have to bake? Yes. Okay. Um, have it uh, on bake. Yeah, and our corn, uh, Misty, is, is organic. Mm -hmm. um, is it necessarily non-GMO? Organic is always non-GMO. Non -GMO. Yeah, we only buy no organic corn. If it's not organic, we don't buy it. But it's not on the dirty dozen list. Corn is not on the dirty dozen 
list that the um, that is put out by the mm, I can't the I can't yeah. think of the name of the the site that puts it out. Um, okay, so we have the corn in here. I have it turned on. We want to set this for two minutes. Uh, pressure cook. Take it down to two minutes. And I want to do quick release. Now the nice thing about the milky is the milky will do the quick release for me, which then I don't have to it's beeping, telling me that it's working. So that's great. Okay. So where I've got go, that. Where are you going? Where are you going? Well, I'm coming over here. Okay. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, usually like on Sunday, I start some um, more sprouts for us because we've figured out like we can eat this batch of them in, you know, five to seven days. This last week, we didn't need, we didn't get to them as good as we should have, unfortunately. Oh, and I need my straw oh, when need. you have a chance. So is, is this, a metal this is a sprouting jar. And I had actually bought this, thank you, at a, a health food store years ago when I, no, I had a shorter one. This one's newer. But anyway, I got it at a health food store. It was like $5. Um, and it comes with the screen lid. These, this is probably like one of my favorites. This is from the Sprout Man um, salad mix. We have a link in the, should be in the show notes. We have an affiliate link with them because we really like their products. They come to you fast. And um, this is a mixture, let me tell you what this is a mixture of. This is alfalfa, broccoli, clover, and radish. And it can have a little kick to it with that radish in there and I'm going to do three tablespoons of the seeds and then I'm going to use the filtered water Tom you might have to turn it I'm going to use the filtered water from the fridge I've got some beet boost on there I see because we have a charcoal filter for the um, dispenser water dispenser on the fridge so I'm just going to do this. Uh, uh, Jesse was able to join us. Oh, hey, like. Jesse. And she sees Tiffany's flowers. They were all commenting the other oh, day how they were missing. I'm so sorry. I tell you, we, we have just had a very crazy schedule lately. So um, they, these are just going to soak until um, we go to bed. And then I will rinse them. And at that time... I will turn this upside down and I just use one of these little easels. These are on our Amazon page and I have it sit on a plate and I line the plate with a paper towel to absorb any moisture. Um, but that won't be until we go to bed. I'll rinse these before we go to bed. Right now they're just going to sit on the counter and they're just going to soak. And um, you can do that overnight or I usually do it in the morning and let them um, just soak all day and then they'll be good to uh, start sprouting this afternoon. Okay, so I'm just going to put these things away. I'm just going to set these over here. We just have a lot going on. Okay, I think that's pretty much... Oh, I got all that started. Did you show the herbs, Tom? I haven't, but I sure can. Okay, so um, I put... I rinsed my herbs, I wash them. So I have cilantro here. I have chives. I have dill because I need to make another batch of the ranch dressing today. Um, and I have the Italian parsley. And so I just wash them in my sink with cold water and then lay them out here so that they can air dry a bit because they chop much better when they're not soaking wet. If you have a salad spinner, you could use salad spinner. Um, I'm also, I'm going to be making my quinoa banana oat muffins because I'm out, so I will have some of those coming up. Um, and right now what I'm going to do is I'm doing kind of like a, a little dump soup. When am I going to make breakfast? Well, you can make your breakfast whenever you're ready. Oh, I forgot to show you guys on the um, sprouts. 
someone, and I don't remember who, so uh, forgive me if you're watching and you're the one that told me, <clears throat> I don't remember who told me that instead of putting sticky labels on jars, you can actually use a Sharpie, even though it says permanent marker, you can use a Sharpie on them and it will wash off with soapy water. So what I do is I write on it um, how many tablespoons of sprouts I did, three tablespoons, and this is salad mix, and today is Sunday. And that way, this is on here so that I don't forget when I started it, how much I used in it, and what I'm sprouting. And then when it's all done, I'll just wash that and it'll come right off. So um, I love that tip, it's so easy to do that. Tom, you have a question. Uh, Misty's, uh, Misty's wondering how long the herbs stay fresh after you buy them from Whole Foods. You know, it really depends on how fresh they are. It really does. Like usually cilantro will last a week for me. Um, this uh, particular uh, batch of dill didn't look great when I bought it. So I'll be using it up today. And the Italian parsley was super fresh. You could just tell because it was so uh, crisp and so it just it really depends on how old they are when you buy them honestly and so um, but I'll I wash them like this then I'll take and put them in containers and line the container with a paper towel if you don't use paper towels you could use a tea towel and um, that helps absorb the moisture I put a lid on them and put them in the fridge and they do great and I have discovered if they get a little bit of uh, wilty if I just cut the bottoms of them and put them in a glass of water, they usually will perk up again. So, but I get them, they'll last usually for days. Another yeah. question. What's that mat they're drying on over there? You know what? That is just one of those um, dish drying mats that I, they are made specifically for drying dishes and they're super absorbent. I bought them at Costco. Tom, you can look and see if you can find dish drying mats, cloth mats on okay. Amazon. Um, they came in a set of two. I know they sell them also like at Bed Bath & Beyond in different places. And so um, they just are super absorbent, much more absorbent than just using a terry towel. Another question. Um, I, uh, I'm gonna take your questions while I chop up some onions. Okay. Um, Okay, TS is asking, do you also make your cheese sauce when, when you batch crab? Um, if we need it, I will make it. But right now we have cheese sauce in the um, refrigerator. And so I probably won't be making it today just because we already have some. And, and we have enough to get us until um, like Tuesday, to, till Tuesday. And, and then it, I'll have to do probably some more batch prep on Tuesday. And then Stephanie's asking, do you, uh, once the steamed corn when this corn comes out of the pressure cooker, mm -hmm. uh, do you store it in the, uh, those Ziploc containers? Do you put the lids on or leave the lids off? I put the lids on. And only four of them will fit in each one of those containers. But we do have some other um, plastic containers that like Glad or, or um, Ziploc that hold, um, it's a larger one that will hold more. But yes, that's what we do. And then TS is asking on, on the herbs you were describing earlier. Um, mm -hmm. The parsley. Is the regular parsley the same as Italian parsley? It is Got not. Got the greens for the ranch, but we'll use regular chia seeds instead of the white. Yes, it's fine to use the regular. I just like um, the white the, ones. Yeah, the parsley was the first question. I'm sorry, I mixed them up. Okay, so Italian parsley and regular parsley do taste different. Um, you could use either one. I do prefer the Italian parsley myself. Um, that's just personal preference. So I just think it has a better flavor. I like the texture of it better. The regular parsley just seems a lot more coarse to me. And I was buying parsley one day. I was in the supermarket buying some parsley and a lady, I was looking at the Italian, this was years ago, I was looking at the Italian and the regular parsley and this gal came up and she said, are you trying to decide which parsley to buy? And I said, yes. 
<clears throat> and she said, if you're cooking anything that you want to taste, have taste delicious, she said, buy the Italian. She said, I'm a chef. And I said, oh, okay, great. <laughs> and so that's what I did. Okay, so now I have... Are you going to chop another onion? I think I'm done chopping okay, the onion. Okay, there's a I question think. on what knife is that you're using. T uh, Misty is wondering what knife are you using? Yeah, so this is Here, I'll put you on this. a Wuth Wusthoff. Which camera? Yeah, show it there. That's good. Perfect. Okay, this is a 7-inch Wusthoff, if I'm saying that right, chef's knife. And I bought this years and years ago. I've probably had it for at least 20 years. Yeah, well, in German and it would be Wustoff. Wustoff, yeah. yeah. Um, it says Wustoff Classic, uh, 17 centimeters. And it's from Germany, and I absolutely love it. It fits my hand really well. I don't have huge hands, um, and it just fits my hand really well. I love it. Tom doesn't use it. Because he doesn't, it doesn't fit him as well. Um, but I love it. Yeah. So I. It is on our Amazon shop page. It's not inexpensive, but it's in the utensils, knives. Yes. Uh, category ideal list on our shop. It is Amazon expensive. Page. It is expensive. Okay. So now I'm just getting. I'm putting this chopped onion in. Oh, something's my popping over here. Hot. I think it's. It's okay. They're okay. Is it okay? No potatoes are exploding. No, but okay, good. So um, that was like one and a half onions that I put in there. And which camera am I on, Tom? You're here. What are you making in this pot? Okay, so I am just making, this is like a dump soup. I just, you know, want something super simple um, to use up. I bought this uh, sweet kale chopped salad kit at Costco and I'm gonna just dump the little kit that comes with it with the oil salad dressing and the pumpkin seeds and the um, cranberries because they have oil on them. So I just dump that and then um, I don't know if they can, can they see this, Tom? Yeah. Um, you can hold it up to the camera here. So this is just a really delicious mixture. I wish it was organic. It's not. Sometimes ours has organic. So it has broccoli stock, green cabbage, Brussels sprouts, kale, chicory, dried cram. Oh, the dried cranberries and pumpkin seeds I'm not using. So the vegetables are chicory, kale, Brussels sprouts, green cabbage, and broccoli stock. And I am just dumping that in the pressure cooker along with those chopped onions and I'm also going to add these um, this is just organic mixed vegetables from Whole Foods and it is a mixture of carrots corn green peas and green beans and I'm just gonna add that to it as well and this just becomes like kind of a dump soup. It's just like, okay, I needed to use that bag of salad mix up. Tom, can you grab me the can opener? Pretty please. So I'm gonna put that in there. And then I'm going to use, this is um, a seasoning called Depth. And this is from Local Spicery. It's one of my favorite places to get spices. I don't use them exclusively. Um, but I, a lot of theirs I absolutely love. Well, I haven't tasted anything of theirs that I don't love. And so this just, this has that umami flavor. And I don't know where my smaller teaspoon oh. is. I'm just going to guess. Here, I got Are you going to hand it to me? Yeah. You'll be my kitchen One assistant. Teaspoon. My kitchen assistant. I'm going to add a teaspoon of this. And it will just add a very nice earthy flavor to it. And then I have this Sol della Toscana garlic tomato blend that is also from Local Spicery. And it's localspicery.com if you want to order from them. They're here in Northern California. And if you put Nutmeg Notebook in the um, customer comment section at checkout, they will give you two little samples of something that you want to sample. You can also put in there what it is you would like to sample. 
So I have this, this is a very old Pampered Chef can opener. They have a newer model now, but what I like about it is that it does a clean cut so that you have no sharp edges. So if you have animals or children, you can see, like I can just put my finger all the way around there. It doesn't get cut. And you can put this back on like a lid if you wanted to. So I'm just going to add, you know what? I'm thinking I really should do this in the eight quart. It's this getting is pretty get, full. It's getting really full. Let's let's switch. We always said this is reality cooking. This is reality cooking. So you want the eight quart out? Yeah, because this isn't a recipe. This is just a dump. Also, I want to show you guys, these are really cool. Do you want the milky or the uh, Instant Pot 8 yeah, quart? Yeah, I'll do the Instant Pot 8 quart. Okay. Um, these are magnetic. I don't think I can even get it off. These are from um, plantbaseddallas.com, and they're magnetic, and they are little charts to put on the side of your Instant Pots and for cooking. And these, I, these are, are just unplugged? super clever. Yeah, but I'm gonna have you. I'm gonna have you take what's in there and dump it in here. Just set this in the sink, I think. Or and then and I can just it? dump it. And you can just dump it because I'm gonna stir it anyway. Um, so anyway, you can go to plantbaseddallas.com. Here, here's how you do you this. And you can order them. Cool. You wanna try some reality TV? Are we... I don't know. Well, You're you making put, you, me you, nervous. You put that in. <laughs> wow. It's dumped. It is dumped. So now it's really dumb soup. It is. There we go. That's going to look better. Oh, I need a spatula. I'll here. grab a spatula. Here we go. This is just how we do things, you guys. Where are you plugging this in at? I need a longer cord. Um, it doesn't have to stay here. Oh. It could well, go someplace else. Okay, once you get it together, we'll move it. Okay. We could. All right. It'll just give me more counter space. Okay. Okay, yeah, we don't want to miss out on all that yummy onion. Because that's I'm sorry if my so head's good. cut off. I didn't adjust the camera for this. Okay. Okay, that's good. That's good. And then why don't you bring me like the big four cup measure full of hot water. So if you start with some hot liquid, it will help your pressure cooker come to um, temperature quicker if you start out with hot liquid. So I'm going to add that other can of tomatoes. Four cups, you said? Yeah, I might need more. I'm just guessing here, you guys. I'm just making this up as I go. It's just, you know, it's something that you can do when you have a bunch of leftovers. Am I or doing a fast just pour? stuff that needs Am to I doing be a fast pour? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Beautiful. And More then from food. Local Spicery, I have the Bada Bing Bouillon. Um, and this is just to add, I'm just using this just to add some flavor since I'm not using... There's more if you decide you want it. Okay, yeah, I think I do. I can already tell. Well, I put two cups in here. Perfect. How much do Let's you want? Let's do it. The That's veggies great. will give up some water, won't they? They will, but I already did but it, this you know. is going to be a soup. Oh. So, and then I'm going to do a tablespoon of the bada bing bouillon. Ooh, mommy, ooh, nami. Okay, I'm going to go check questions. Super cute. Okay, so I've got that in there. And let me see. What else do I want? My lights. I think. If I had some squash, I would totally add squash to it. That would be really good. Are those butter? Are my butternut squashes ready to use yet? One of them would be, yeah. The, From the, the, those first two I, I, I grabbed. Why don't you get me one of those? I think that would be good. Oh, you want right now? Okay. In here. All right, something's beeping. Okay, I'm going to put you back on your primer. That's the corn. Okay, you're back on this camera now. Okay. Oh, here, that's, so this that's is an automatic, really oh, sorry for the fast ride there. This particular pressure pot has an automatic stream release. We don't have to do it. That's so. the nice thing about that milfy. Yeah, that little gizmo on the back there, when the time's up, it, it releases itself. 
So, um, okay. So I already have the this onion out here. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to give you that, honey. You're going to be working on the cutting board again. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and. Okay. What am I going out to get? Uh, one of those squashes. So our butternut squash from our garden, they did not grow very big. Uh, they're cute little, like mini ones. And we read that after you pick them, you need to kind of like let them cure for a couple of weeks. So that's what we've been doing. So since I already have these onions out, I'm gonna go ahead and, excuse me, and chop them because then they will all already be chopped and ready to go if I decide to make something else in the next few days. So did you already wash those, Tom? Wash the squash? Uh, oh, that sounds, no, wash I, the squash. No, I haven't washed the squash. Okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the onion. Um, I do like having some onion already cut in the fridge, it is just a time saver. I also like to have some garlic already prepped. Because, you know, then when you're in a hurry, it just makes that having to you're cook something. You're gonna just do one of them, right? Yeah, just one. Okay, well before we cut into this guy and before I wash it. You wanna show them? I wanna show them this, what we learned about these splits, but I gotta make it so my head's not, if I guess right here. That should put me on screen. The board's off, but okay. So this little guy, this little squash, you know, was laying there, and we noticed one morning that it had a split. So I went online and found out that if you, if the skin hardens on a butternut squash, and then like, like they get more water than they have been getting, um, then it can split the skin because it's no longer stretchable. But they said, don't worry, because the squash has its own mechanism to make its own band-aid that puts a glaze mm -hmm. over the split. And sure enough, it, did. it didn't rot or anything. There's like, it looks like somebody ran a bead of sealer uh, of glue or something in there to uh, seal up the edge where the split is. So I thought that was a, a rather interesting uh, act of nature to preserve the fruit by repairing itself even after it cracked. So I'll wash this and we'll cut it open and see what happens Perfect. inside. So this is just one of the oh, glass yes. snapware containers. Um, you know, it has the plastic snap on top, but um, it is a glass container. And so I just put the onions in there and then these are just gonna go in the fridge. And they can be used for whatever we wanna use them for. You, know, you don't wanna use your fancy knife on this. You wanna cut this with Well, I'm gonna else. want the peeler first. Are you going to peel it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you have to peel it. So there are some, you know, like the kabocha squash. No, I, need, I think I need the other one, the one that goes the long way. That KitchenAid one or the others. Um, <clears throat> there are some squashes that you don't have to peel. Like I don't peel the kabocha squash or the delicata squash. Yeah, that'll, that'll work. Um, but the butternut squash is... Um, tough and so you do need to peel it. I do think that this type of peeler works better for these long strips because it just doesn't get that soft. You, it, you just don't want to eat it. The kabocha squash peel though, I like it. I will eat it. I don't eat the acorn squash peel. So this is considered a winter squash. It is a starch. So Can it, I take this away and plug it in? Or? Uh, no, because I'm adding the squash oh, okay. to it. All right, I'm just gonna is it kind of in the way? Yeah. Okay. So I just want to get that peel off good. So I love butternut squash. My favorite squash though is kabocha. But, um, but I do like butternut squash as well. Okay, you can just see I, this is flying everywhere. I've got some question marks here to check. Misty Blue says, how are you not crying with the onions? Um, it did make me tear up a little bit. 
They weren't as strong as some of them have been. So here's where that, that patch was, Tom. Let's see here. Oh, let me see it. Okay, so you should cut along that so you can, when you cut it open, you should cut along that crack so you can trim off any damaged material. I okay, think. we'll see. Or if you want me to do that with a big knife, I can do that. Why don't you? I'll okay. let you do that with the big knife if you want. I'm just going to, if you're just tuning in, I've got my garbage can down here. I realized in one video that I was oh, doing. Sorry, guys. And I was, uh, I kept throwing stuff down. And I hadn't told people what I was doing. I thought, oh my gosh, they probably wonder what on earth is she doing? Why does she keep bending down there? Okay, so Tom's going to come. You're going to grab a knife. Yeah. And you're going to cut the ends off, the right. end off, just this, and cut that open and yeah, see. Yeah, and you want to come around and make sure that I'm not doing something weird with my head. Sure. I'm just going right. to put these seasonings away. Okay. So... So is it okay? I'm still... You're, Make sure my head's not cut off. It's a little bit. Just the top of it. As long as you're bent over, you're okay. <laughs> Am I still cut off? Did I not guess right? Here, this is better. And do we still have the cutting board? Uh, here, I gotta go down a little bit. Oh. Is the cutting board still here? Oh. Yeah, cutting board's there. Okay. Okay. So I just cut a little bit of that top off, just a tiny bit, because it's not that big old core coming into the... Oh. Perfect. It's not a core, it's, it's like that. There is a little bit of a core on the bottom, I see. So let's see what this stuff did here. Kabocha squash is, com is, is interesting to cut. Okay, so yeah, there's some in damage here we're gonna trim out. Yeah, then I'm so. gonna get a spoon just to get the, the guts out. My grandparents had a farm, and so when we see a little bit of bad something on a fruit or a vegetable, we grew up that you just trim off the bad and you keep right on going. That's right. Because there's nothing wrong with the good. Because you don't want to throw the good out with the bad. That's a parable or something somewhere. And we cut off that little... You're scaring me with that yeah. big knife. Yeah, it's a big knife for this. Here, you can do that part. I'll finish trimming this. <laughs> I don't see my other little favorite knife here. Well, it's probably in the chopping block. Interesting. Okay. I'm just scraping out the tiny little bit. There's not even like a seed in the middle. Okay, it's such there. a little one. All right. That's it for that. Thank you. So do you think we would grow these again next year? I don't think so. Too they took up a lot of space and they didn't produce that much. Produce that much. So we did We're going to go with kabochas next year on a different try. location, yeah. We're going to try. So just get that cleaned up. Okay, I'm going to bring this back down. Okay. There we go. Plus we can buy organic already peeled and diced uh, butternut squash at Costco all winter long and it's so convenient so uh, Deepak's wondering what is the brand of that peeler you used whoops it was a KitchenAid one and then I also there's another brand in there in the, my drawer that Tom didn't find Do that have, I like I don't know that I've got the KitchenAid on the shop page or you not. might not have the KitchenAid one on there and it could be discontinued by now but I like that the the shape of that one for that. I'm going to uh, Melissa just G rinse my asked hands. when did this start? Melissa, we started at nine o'clock. Um, a little after nine. Um, and this is an impromptu. Uh, we couldn't do our Sunday morning walk because of the smoke, so we had cooking to do. So Tammy says, well, let's just set up the studio and, and do what normally she was going to do, but, but we'll share. Yeah. Morning. So this is, <laughs> this is the impromptu thing. Yeah. Uh, this is. Yeah, I'm going to go check and see if I can find that peeler because that's a pretty handy thing. So now I'm just cutting it up kind of bite-sized pieces because this is going to be um, a type of soup. And so I probably am going to have to 
add more water, but I'm going to I'm wait till it's done and see, because like Tom's pointed out, the vegetables are going to release some liquid. KitchenAid white peeler. Oh, did you find it? Yeah. Is it red? Uh, th there is a red model. I've got a different, I'm going to click on the one that Amazon is showing. It's black now, KitchenAid Classic White Peeler, one size. Okay. Black number two. White Peeler, yeah, that's what it's called. Okay, I'm going to add that to our... Um, be on our shop page. It'll be on Kitchen Gadgets. Perfect. Kitchen Gadgets. Perfect. Okay. All right, just added it. Uh, oh, I think this is going to, this is really going to be good. I'm wondering, hmm, how much to add. This is going to be a really good soup. So um, I've had been having some kind of some tummy problems lately, and beans are not always agreeing with me. And that happens to me every once in a while. I have a little bit of a finicky digestive system. And so I really wanted to make a soup without beans in it today um, just to give my... GI track a little bit of a break and see what happens. So, so um, has anybody tried my new vegan ranch dressing recipe yet? Tom is just smitten with it. It has really made him want to eat his salads. And uh, instead I, I've of... I've always wanted to eat I know, my but, but instead of making them... Which camera am I on? Well, it's just a cutting board. I, I, should have okay. been, I should have been on the cutting board cam earlier. I missed, a, I missed out on the... Okay, are so... Are you all done? Yeah, I think so. Well, they sure look nice. I they look pretty, don't they? I'm going to go back over to your camera line. Okay, so... Oh, well, can they see the soup? Oh, yeah. That's on there. Can they see that yep. in this? Is it showing? Yeah. Okay. So this is going to be the soup. It's actually, it's so pretty looking. So I'm going to add, I'm going to add in some of this squash and just decide how much of it I want. So this is everything else stew? Because this, yeah, pretty it's much, right? Stew? So this is the um, chopped kale salad from Costco. And I just threw away the seasoning packet and all the other stuff. I don't want it to be too, I don't want to have too much squash in it. No. So I'm thinking that that's well, about good. Well, some of those good. others you can just save and put on salads and stuff after you get them cooked. Yeah. So I think that looks pretty good. Come back oh, it, this smells so good, you guys. Back from camera smells one. so good. And um, I can add some of the fresh Italian parsley after it has cooked. And I think that will be a really nice addition to it as well. And so, Tom, I'm going to have you put this on. I was wondering if she had butternut squash listed on here. I'm thinking this should not, really should not take more than like five minutes at pressure to cook. Yeah. Um, potatoes cook in five minutes. I think the, the butternut squash. My potatoes squash. cook in five minutes. Yeah. Okay, so me... I think I'll have you put the lid on this. And we're going to start this at five minutes. Which camera? You're over here. Okay. Okay, kind of a couple questions. Yeah. Um, oh, and that says that she definitely will be making the ranch dressing today. Thank you so much for sharing. Great. Um, and um, Melissa has a question I'm going to read. I haven't pre-read this. I have the same GI issues occasionally, Tammy. I've been doing smoothies to get my greens in. Which soup recipe are you using? Yeah, I'm just making this up as I go. So I used one bag. It's classic dump soup. It is a classic dump soup. I'm using one bag of this sweet kale salad, which is uh, broccoli stock, green cabbage, Brussels sprouts, and kale. So, and it is, it says it's 28 ounces, but I think that probably included the little packet of nuts and craisins and a dressing that I threw away. Um, so you could you know, use a mixture of whatever you have. You could use your own, you know, cabbage and chop up some Brussels sprouts and whatever greens you have. So um, a bag of this, two cans of uh, oven roasted, uh, oven roasted, fire roasted tomatoes with no salt added and six cups of water 
and um, about one and a half chopped onions and a bag of frozen vegetables. Um, it was organic mixed vegetables. This is a, how big? 16 ounce, a one pound bag of those. And that was um, corn, green beans, and carrots in that. And that's just because that's what I had. Um, and then some seasonings. So some Italian seasoning, some of the bada bing bouillon from local spicery. So really you could just season it however you want. And so this can be a meal for me. Um, and it doesn't have any, it has peas in it, but it doesn't have any beans in it. So Tom, I'm going to let you take this and put the lid okay. on it. I never couple. saw the lid. We got a couple of questions to catch up on here. <clears throat> okay, and do um, five minutes on high pressure on this okay. one. All right. And um, I'll take questions. Okay. What are the questions? Uh, I'm going to back up here a little bit. Um, okay, I'm going to. Gina's asking about composting in our area, um, and I'll, I'll address that. But I got to figure out which camera I'm on here. That's camera three. Um, I've been exploring composting a little bit, doing some research, looking at different composting containers. Uh, Vitamix, uh, you know, we are Vitamix affiliates. They have a really fancy device that like condenses all of your table scraps down into um, uh, little, you know, pre-processed, ready to go into the garden kind of crumbles. So it's a very interesting concept, but also pretty expensive. Our city does, uh, we do have a green waste container and we have a regular trash container. Our community does go through and, and cycle through all of the trash. They open up every bag. If there's an aluminum can in there, it gets pulled out and recycled. Um, and then we do have the green waste. So all of our bio waste goes into a different dumpster. So um, we don't typically throw table scraps in there, but if we have, you know, a um, a you know, a package of spinach or something that goes bad, I actually dump that into the green waste. So we're kind of halfway there. Um, but unless we're doing a lot more gardening and I'm going to be, you know, wanting that compost here locally it's in our own property, um, I'm still on a learning curve with that. Um, let's see. TS is asking what diameter sweet potatoes uh, can fit in the Ninja Foodie. Costco has, has it for 179 um, and she's considering getting it. Um, I, w I would say, Tammy, not more than, if, if they're really big, you gotta cut them in half. That's what Tammy has had to do a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Here, I'll put you back over on camera one here. Uh, on sweet potatoes and the Ninja, Tammy. Yeah, so I guess what we could do when those are done is we could grab a, a couple of sweet potatoes and then you could see. So, um, the, because the tricky thing with the Ninja is that the um, the shelves are not adjustable. So in the Breville, you have a lot of different um, options of where to put the the um, the baking rack. But in the Ninja, it's set. The air fryer one has one slot that it works in, and then the baking rack has the slot that it will work in, and you can't um, adjust that because they made the groove specific just for those particular racks. But uh, when that one, when our potatoes get done, then we can um, grab a couple of, of sweet potatoes and check that out. So this is just the butternut squash, the extra butternut squash. I'm just putting it in the fridge right now because I'll probably, I like to um, roast that with the, um, with Brussels sprouts, some butternut squash and Brussels sprouts. I have a recipe on the blog for oven roasted Brussels sprouts with the squash and then you make a glaze with pomegranate uh, glaze and it's really delicious. So I think I'll probably make that. If you still have Brussels sprouts left over? I do. Good, okay. Question. Okay, um, Gail's asking, I ordered the powdered oat milk. What, for the dressing, yes. what extra flavor texture does that add as opposed to just using the water alone? It's gonna make it creamy. Oh yeah, um, it'll make it very creamy. It adds um, a little bit of a sweetness. It will also um, make it thicker, and it, it's gonna give you a better mouth feel because it does have a little bit of fat in it. 
So let me grab the bag so I, we can show people what it is that we're talking yeah. about. So um, this, and, and you could use any kind of plant milk in it. I've made it with unsweetened almond milk as well, but I do prefer the Joy because it doesn't have any additives in it. I did try soy milk in the vegan ranch, but the soy milk combined with the soy, it was just overpowering to me. It tasted way too much like soy instead of, that was like the predominant flavor that was coming through. So this is made by the Joy Company, J-O-I, which stands for just one ingredient. And so they make these, um, they're, they're practically instant um, products to be able to make your own plant milks with. This one happens to be the oat milk and it is a powder. And you just take two tablespoons of this oat powder, which um, is just one ingredient, organic oats, and you mix it with one cup of water. And that makes a delicious oat milk. And the wonderful thing is that this is shelf stable. And so what I love about it is for cooking, then I just add however much powder I need for the right amount of liquid. And you know, you if I'm making something in a blender, I don't even have to um, mix it up ahead of time. I can just put it right in the blender. And so um, this has just two grams of fat per two tablespoons, which makes one whole cup of milk and 85 calories. Um, and of course, zero cholesterol, cholesterol, zero saturated fat. Um, it has one gram of fiber. It has five grams of sugar, and that is just the natural sugar that is in oats. And so it does add a little bit of sweet, a sweet note to the dressing as well. But um, I liked, I like it as well as using the almond. Um, both of those taste really good. So um, super easy to use. And we have a link for this also in the show notes. And we do have an affiliate relationship with them. And we were using their product um, before we got an affiliate ship. So this bag makes one gallon of milk and um, great for travel as well. But I love it because it can just be in my pantry and I don't have to worry about going to the grocery store to get plant milk. Elise is asking about where did we get the charcoal filter for our refrigerator? Fortunately or unfortunately, it's a proprietary filter that fits only GE refrigerators. And I actually ordered them online. They're about 50 bucks a piece. I have gone to, um, I think I successfully got one at Home Depot once. Uh, but yeah, it's proprietary to this make and model, uh, this GES 28 um, uh, refrigerator. So, um, and I do replace them every six or eight months or so. It definitely makes a difference in the flavor of the water from what comes off the tap because it's taking out, you know, the chlorine and, and anything else. So we, we do notice uh, um, uh, quite a difference in the flavor of, you know, water if we're drinking.
Okay, I think we're back. Sorry about that, you guys. The batteries. Ask, ask him where we cut off. Where did we cut off? Can anybody tell us what was the last thing you heard me say? Is anybody telling you? Yeah, I'm waiting. Okay. Um, they're fixing it. Yeah, you're back. Okay. Um, well, anyway, I'm going to make the quinoa banana oat muffins. And I'm just going to go ahead and say it again, just in case that's where I got cut off. So this is a mixture that I mix up ahead of time. Oh, a filter for the fridge is where we left off. So, so oh, wow. you went right into banana oat muffins then. Okay, I'm doing it right yeah. now. Okay, I just was answering your question. And so um, I mix these up. You can look it up on the blog, quinoa banana oat muffins. I use a variety of different oats and grains in it. If you wanna just use all rolled oats, you can. It will turn out. I prefer the texture using the quick cooking steel cut oats. If you can't find those, um, you can put regular steel cut oats through the food processor and just chop them up a little bit more. But I make containers of this, six of them at a time. And then I pop them in my freezer so that when I want to go and make muffins, it's super easy because I have my own muffin mix mixed up. And you know, I believe in working smarter, not harder in the kitchen. And so, um, so I have the dry mix pre-made, and um, if you, if you want to know where to get quick cooking steel cut oats, I used to be able to buy them at Costco, and our Costco quit carrying them. You can get them on Amazon. I think we have them in our pantry page. Also, Whole Foods sells them, and so does Trader Joe's. So to add to these, we're going to use 20 ounces of ripe banana, and see how ripe these are? This is what we want to use, really ripe bananas. So I have my scale here. This is a Vitamix um, scale that goes with my blender. And so I'm just weighing these without the peel. So two of them weigh 6.6 .6 ounces. So it, you can see that it takes quite a few. But here's the deal. Bananas come in so many different sizes. That's why I used a weight instead of how many bananas because sometimes the bananas are huge and sometimes they're not. Tom, I'm going to need more bananas. So that's 17 ounces. Uh, <laughs> I it missed my toes. It, well, I'm glad for that. So, and you want them really spotty because that is when you're going to get the most sweetness from the banana. So that's good right there. Do you want a snack, a banana snack? Is the texture of the muffins going to be um, relatively normal for those that don't eat like this? Or are they going to be, they're pretty dense, aren't they? They're very dense. So they're not going to have that soft crumb that like a regular muffin would have. They are definitely a hearty muffin. And so they are not gonna be a soft crumb. I've just gotta get my potato masher here, you guys, and mash those up. Let, and remember to ask me for things, please. Well, I, I guess I could. You can get me a one cup measuring cup. So I just use my uh, potato masher. This is my favorite one the one with the the what do I want to say just the squiggly line I guess I like it it's a KitchenAid one I think we have it on our Amazon page and just mash them you could put it in a blender if you wanted to but that does make it a lot more liquidy and I have found if I do that then I usually do have to add more oats to the batter in order to absorb that extra liquid that it makes. And if you use frozen bananas, those are more watery as well. And so then you might need to add a little more of the oats. So, you know, when we're doing this whole food, plant-based baking, it's a little bit different. Okay, Tom, those potatoes, it says those potatoes are done. 
If you wanna just take a knife and poke them and make sure that, that they are done. So the Yukon Golds I bake for about an hour. We lowered the temperature in the Ninja just because they sit so close to the heating element in that. In the Breville and in my big wall oven, I do 400 degrees convection for an hour and 15 minutes for my Japanese sweet potatoes and my Hannah yams because that makes them so much sweeter. That allows them enough baking time that all the juices really come together. Um, they kind of caramelize and they're wonderful. Perfect. Yeah, I think. They got really done. Yep. Okay, great. So those are the Yukon Golds and we cooked those in the Ninja. Okay, so you can see um, it's not liquidy, they're just mashed, like you would for banana bread. This is what you would do for banana bread. And now I'm gonna add applesauce, just a cup of applesauce. What I like about pre-making the um, muffin mix is I don't have to get out all those spices and all those individual ingredients. And I only make these about once every two weeks, two to three weeks. And so I don't have to get everything out and make them up from scratch every time. I'm just gonna pop this in the sink. I do like to keep warm soapy water going in my sink when I'm batch prepping so that I can pop things in the sink because if you let things sit and get hard, then it's much more difficult to clean them especially like blenders and things like that. So this is just the Honeycrisp organic applesauce with no added sugar from Costco. And I'm gonna add a cup. Question, Tom. While you're doing that, Melissa's asking, what does the putting the oven on convection do for the cooking the potatoes? Yeah, it's, it's um, uh, a little bit, what do I wanna say? Well, it, it circulates air around and so it just helps the cooking process to use more convection even, more even and cooking more even cooking and, and faster and it is faster yeah so and if you don't have convection you can just use oops I just hit myself with applesauce you can use um, just bake that's perfectly fine yeah uh, everybody well I guess the people that there's still some folks that they don't have sound our sound is working just fine here on my monitor coming through YouTube. So maybe you can hear it. Um, yeah, it's fine. Uh, I might have people refresh their page. I don't know why they wouldn't have sound. I don't know. Um, refresh your page. Can you write that well, to them in the notes? Yeah, I'll put uh, I'll put a note here because they certainly can't hear us. Um, if I mean they can't hear us saying that they're not hearing us at all. Uh, JL says that the, the, that kind of masher you used it works a lot better than the one with holes. It does. I have one of those with the holes, and that does not work well at all. I'm also going to grab some raisins because um, the recipe does not call for raisins, but I do like sometimes to add some raisins. So especially if I'm going to share these with the grandkids, um, two of our grandchildren like raisins and one does not, but he doesn't like these muffins anyway. So uh, I just, I'm not going to measure. It's probably about a third of a cup of raisins, just a little bit, just for a little extra um, sweetness. And we also like the texture of them. And then this is my pre-made quinoa banana oat muffin mix. And you can see I've got my cinnamon and my nutmeg in there and powdered vanilla. And then I'm just going to mix this up. So Tom, I'll let you take this stuff here. All of this you can have. And I'm just going to get this mixed up. And then I'm going to need uh, the half cup measuring cup. And so just because the moisture content of the bananas can vary from banana to banana. I just always look at my mixture and decide, do I need to add a little more oats to it? And you'll get a feel for that as you cook with this um, and get used to cooking this way. 
you, you'll be able to decide, hmm, does it look like it's going to be too wet? And I am going to add, this looks very wet. So those bananas just had a lot of moisture in them. So I'm actually going to grab some oats and add a little bit of oats to this. So we did a, um, a live video on Amazon earlier this week where we showed all different types of storage containers that we like and use. And these are the OXO. And you can still watch that. You can watch the replay of it. I'm going to do about three quarters of a cup. So that's a half cup measure. So that's going to give me about three quarters of a cup. I think I'm done. And this, I think, will just result in a better muffin. Because I don't like them. They're, these are moist muffins, but I don't want it to be gummy inside. And one thing that I like about this mixture is that it does not make gummy muffins. So I'm just going to grab my muffin trays and a small spatula so that I can get these going in my muffin trays. So I'm using... There's a question if you're still going live this afternoon at 4 from... We are. Um, from Stephanie and is the glass bowl in an Amazon store? It um, is. Yes, it is, but the big one is all is often out of the stock as I think it is now. There's three sizes of that and you just have to keep watching. Actually, you can go in, I think, and click on it and get a notice when it comes back in stock. Maybe. Does Amazon have that? Maybe. Um, okay. So, what I do now, here, this stuff too can go, this stuff okay. here. Okay. And I'm getting thirsty. I've got to have a drink of my beet <laughs> boost. Okay. This is a lot of talking. So now I've got the quinoa banana oat muffins are all mixed up and this is what I do. I measure half a cup of batter in my measuring cup. You're done with the butter bean? I am. And then I just okay. put it in the, these are silicone muffin cups. Um, I've had these for years and they're no longer available, but I have another a different brand on my Amazon page and this is wonderful for fat-free baking because nothing sticks. Now the trick when you're using silicone to bake with is let whatever you bake in it get cool before you try to take it out because if you try to take everything out while it's still hot it will stick. So let everything cool. I had to learn that the hard way. Let everything cool first. And then, and it doesn't have to be completely cold, but you have to let it cool down. And it will start to uh, release from the edge. And I usually just take a little plastic spoon, so I'm not, or a plastic knife, so I'm not cutting the silicone and I just will run it around the edge to make sure I have a nice, clean, smooth edge that's going to come out. And then I'll put them on a, a baking rack to cool. And when they're completely cool, then I'll put them in a container and I'll put them in the freezer. And I'll just take one out at a time. And they... Um, you can just heat them up in the microwave for like 40 seconds from frozen and they're perfect. We always take these with us when we travel. I'll make up a batch and freeze them and then we'll take them with us when we travel because if we have one of these and a sweet potato piece of fruit, we can call it a meal because these are very filling. I mean, you cannot yeah. eat. Just, just to rewind, these are your, your quinoa, quinoa banana oat muffins that have been up for some time. And yes. It's, it's actually a you pretty can, popular recipe. You could recipe. link to them in the comments okay. for everybody. Just go. It's a very popular recipe. I have a variety of things that you can make from the 
um, muffin mix. There's jammy bars. There's fruit cobbler. Um, lots of different things that you can make out of them. So they work really well. Great little batter to have. Now you can change these up too. I have, there's a pumpkin one. There's a variation for a pumpkin muffin. If you can't have banana or don't like banana, you know some people do have banana allergy. If you can't have bananas, you can try using um, some mango. You can use fresh mango or you can use frozen mango in place of the banana. Uh, you could up the amount of applesauce that you use and use uh, some pureed uh, yeah. Japanese sweet potato or Hannah yam. Misty likes how you pre-measure the stuff because you can do it over the bowl and if you got extra you can just slide it off. And then exactly. When you go to the muffin tray, you've got exactly the exact amount yes. you need. Yes. This is just the easiest way I have found to have them come out because you want them Was all... Was I supposed to turn this pot on Yes, somewhere? you're supposed to go turn that on. Five, yeah. five minutes. On, on, on what? High. Thing? High pressure, five minutes. So yeah, this is just the easiest way I have found to make these. We want them to all be equal because we want them to all bake at the same, you know, in the same amount of time and all be done at the same amount of time. And I'm, I have just a little bit left in here, which that is just the chef's snack is what I say. I think the chef gets to have that. Now you can make that into a cookie shape and you can bake it if you want um, into a cookie or because it's vegan, there's no raw anything in it that would hurt you, you can just eat it as a snack as well. If you wanted to, you could put chocolate chips in this. You can do different dried fruit. Some people like to chop up an apple and put a chopped apple and some raisins in it. You can do a little bit of pineapple. You can do blueberries, fresh or frozen blueberries. So I have just a little bit left in there and that will be my snack later. So I have those are ready to go and they will go, they'll go in the Breville when the Breville is done, which it's almost done. And so um, I'm just going to have you set these over there, honey. Can I just set them on top of the... No, because no. I don't want them to get hot. They need oh, okay. to sit over here where it's cool. Okay. I'll give you this one. I'll just set it there. Okay. All right. Now, okay, we do have to... We need to drain. Here, I'm going to give you this. This is my snack for later. Okay, I do need to drain the tofu because the next thing I'm going to make... I'll get it. Is it ready to drain? No, I want to show them. Oh, well, you, you, what do you want to drain it into? I want to just, I was just going to, well, I was just going to use my bowl here. Oh, okay, that's fine. Why not? Sure. Um, okay, so this is a recipe out of Food is Climate. And this is a book by Glenn Mercer that just came out this week. And I am very happy to have some of my recipes included in this book, along with my friend Tiffany Wilkerson, who's got these, um, she has taco stuffed bell peppers, as well as tofu chorizo stuffed jalapenos, and that's what I'm gonna be making. Tom, I'm gonna need a pair of blue gloves. Okay, why don't you um, tell them all of the, the chefs that are in there? Oh, I, there's so many. Well, the um, ones we know. Yeah, so of course, Chef AJ has recipes in here, Crocs in the Kitchen, Dylan Holmes from uh, Well Your World, Brittany Giroudi from the Giroudi, uh, family. Uh, I was looking to see where he has everybody listed. Um, let's see, of course, Tammy Kramer from Nutmeg Notebook, uh, Caroline um, from Mama Says, and um, Joanna 
uh, Samaro Merzer, so Glenn's wife, has recipes in here as well as Food for Life uh, cooking instructors are in here, um, including our friend Tiffany who moderates for us during our lives. And so um, I am going to be making Tiffany's Tofu Chorizo Stuffed Jalapenos. And today at 4 p.m. Pacific, you guys, I will be interviewing Glenn about this book. And so this book is about climate change and the impact that becoming vegan, adopting a vegan lifestyle can make on uh, climate change and you know what we can do as a grassroots effort to um, help mitigate what's happening with um, climate change. So anyway, that's what I'm doing next. And so I already have, I'm gonna use, that's probably scary to use that knife. Um, what I really need is one of those recipe book, those cookbook stands. If anybody has one that you can recommend from Amazon, let me know. Um, because I really need to buy one so that my books can stand up and stay clean. So we have one block of tofu that needs to be pressed. And so I have that in my tofu press. This is called a tofu express. And I'm going to pour off the water and just look at how much water there was in that tofu. Melissa's wondering, do you notice a difference in the way things bake in the Breville versus the big oven? Um, pretty much the same. Some things what might bake a little bit faster because um, it's such a, a small compartment in there and so it just seems like you know everything's just closer to the heat. Um, but it works pretty pretty much the same. So there is my tofu. I'm wondering I might need a bigger bowl. Let's see. I'm going to do this bigger bowl just so I have more room. So what I do like about these bowls, you guys, is they have lids that snap on. They um, are like the, the um, snap lids. Tom, I'm going to give you this. Okay, Gina's asking on the muffins, if you add a little baking soda and a little vinegar, will it make the muffins lighter? You know what? I have um, in there to use baking powder and it really doesn't make much difference. You could try the baking soda With and the, the vinegar. vinegar, but the thing is baking soda is so loaded with sodium. And so I know a lot of people that follow me want low sodium recipes. And so um, that's where that gets really tricky. Okay, Tom, the potatoes are done. If you wanna pull the potatoes out, Okay, so now I have my tofu in there, and I need to see what else we have to do. I haven't made this recipe before, so if you don't have a tofu press, you can put the tofu on a plate, line the plate with either paper towels or a kitchen towel, put more paper towels or kitchen towels on top of it, put another plate on top of it upside down, and then a heavy cast iron skillet or a brick or something like that. That will um, make a makeshift tofu press. And that actually works pretty, pretty darn well. Okay, so I'm coming over. We can see what these look like. They're starting to stay back. They're hot. Uh -huh. They're starting to ooze out the top. A little yeah, bit there. But they look great. They're all done? Yep. Okay. Those can go over there. And so you just did on a silk mat on one of our I did. Our and I trays. just used one of the air fryer um, trays for that. And so now we need to put the baking rack back in there. And I'm coming across with the muffins. And well, I've got to turn that. We've got to go to, we've got to reset the oven. And we're going to reset it see. to 350. And we're going to do. I'm going to do 25 minutes at on convection. I kind of like them to get a little crunchy on top, but this is not the directions. Um, it, I, I say just bake on the directions, but I accidentally did it this way one time and I really liked it. So um, why not do it that and way again? And side by side, right? 
Yes. Do you want to preheat? Is this rack the way you want it? Yeah. Yeah, but it does need, is it up to temperature yet? No. Maybe it is already. It needs to, yeah, it has to be at 350. Well, it's going to be there in a minute because it was already hot with the other. Okay. All right, so I've got a little bit of chopping to do because we need a cup of yeah, diced Yeah, the timer's going. Red so it's, it's at temperature because okay, the timer's perfect. counting down. It's at 23 minutes. Okay, great. I'm just going to reset to 25. Okay. And I am, I am baking those on convection because I like it when they get a little crispy on top, but that's just me. So you don't have to do that with those. So just to remind you, I'm making Tiffany's Tofu Chorizo Stuffed Jalapenos. And, oh, you did get me that. Good. So, and we need one cup of chopped red onion. So I just need to get the peel off of this. This is the worst part. Here we go. Now I'm getting it. So pretty it's just, onion is so it, shiny. Oh, they're so pretty, aren't they? I love the red onions. They are really pretty. So, Tom, you want to get the corn out before the corn gets overcooked. And maybe you want to show them how the corn turns out in the pressure cooker. Okay, let me get a couple of containers. And you can just, here. yeah, take it out. Probably should set them on a plate first and let them oh, cool, cool off. before you put them in the plastic container. And... Let's see, let me switch back forward to <laughs> So Tom's going to take the corn out of the pressure cooker. And I, somebody asked me, why do you cook it in advance? I cook it in advance so that it doesn't spoil. And then we can reheat it or we can just eat it cold, depending on, you know, what we want to do with it. Like last night, I um, took an uh, ear of corn that had been cooked, batch cooked in the pressure cooker, and I air fried it to heat it up. And it was delicious because it, it changes the texture of it. And it was so good. Okay, and so I'm, I'm gonna... You turn it to you. Okay, all right. So we're coming over here to the corn and make this as tall as I can. can you tell me if I'm in the picture? Sure. Is my head cut off? Uh, the top of it's cut off. Okay. It comes you know, off. just the, like you're, you're li just a little bit scalped. <laughs> How's that? That's better. That's got to be my knees. So yeah, this is coming out. Yeah, it's not going to be overdone. No, it won't be because you're looks, getting to it in it time. It looks beautiful. So we'll just let these guys cool off before we put them into the containers. And then there's that sweet juice down in there. I don't need to have that shut again. Okay, corn is out. Did you show it to him? Well, okay. It's hot. <laughs> so very, very plump and tasty looking. So. Um, yeah, we just, I'll squeeze lime on these and in just lime, I squeeze lime on it and rub it so that kind of some of the lime pulp gets on there and I'll have that as a side with whatever else I'm eating and it's delicious that way. So. Okay. Will you give me a one cup measure while you're over there? Please. Ooh, that was a fast ride. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Woo! Make right. everybody dizzy. Yeah. Another one cup measure. Yeah. That's Ooh. fine. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so I'm just diced up the red onion. Remind people that just came on what you're fixing. And I'm making the tofu chorizo stuffed jalapenos that are in the Food is Climate book. This is a recipe by our friend Tiffany Wilkerson. And if you follow us on YouTube and follow our lives, you know that Tiffany is one of our moderators. So this extra onion that I don't need is just going to go in this container. I'm not going to dice the rest of it. I'm just going to slice it and 
That way it can be used on top of veggie burgers or in a salad or whatever we decide. And if we want to dice it, we can. But and then again, I'm just using um, these glass containers that have the um, snapware lids. I don't know why I can never remember the name of these. And that goes in the fridge. And then we've got those ready to go. I like those be also because they stack, which is really nice. Okay, is there anything else? Okay, I'm gonna, Tom, can you talk to everybody for a minute while I wash my hands and get the gloves on before I start messing with the jalapenos? I'm kind of my, my mouth full. <laughs> <laughs> you want, maybe you should share with them what I'll, you're I'll, eating. I'll just follow you. You're yeah. not gonna share with them what you're eating? Yeah, I, well, I gave up, it's, it's almost 11, it's quarter to 11, so I gave up on my- Oh, usual. having breakfast. Oh. So I'm having a, well-being bar <laughs> from our friends at the well-being company for breakfast tell them about the bar and, and a spot of tea so oh well, i've tore the package i can read the ingredients here uh total calories 210 so that'll take me till lunch with no problem total fat eight grams um and ingredients dates almond butter black beans green or yellow peas, unsweetened, unsweetened chocolate, cocoa powder, uh, all, um, and that's an organic cocoa powder. So anyway, that's a substitute breakfast for me when I don't get my oats. Okay, I'm just gonna bring this tray over for making these stuffed jalapenos. I'm excited to try these. So I still have to make salad dressing. We've got soup going in one um, pressure cooker. Soup I just made up and this morning with stuff that we had that needed to be used up. And um, I have a watermelon to cut. We baked potatoes already and as I said I'm not making salads today because we have salads left that um, so I don't need to make salads today so I will make salads probably on Tuesday or Wednesday so Tom can they see what I'm doing do I have stuff in the way or am I okay no you're okay uh, so oh. I'm gonna need a teaspoon if you could grab me a teaspoon as well that would be great. And I'm putting gloves on because I'm going to be uh, working with the jalapeno peppers. And these are large ones. No, I need a not a not a measuring oh, teaspoon. Not one I'm teaspoon? sorry, just a, a I took you literally. So I know as you I did. Often a small, do. a small spoon. <laughs> Thank you, honey. Um, it called for large ones. I got the largest ones I could. And, but I couldn't get 10 of them. I think it called for 10. So I'll just stuff the amount that I can and then the extra stuffing, we can just cook it and we can have it um, as a, a topping for our salads, yeah. I Karen, think would work well. Karen says that she would be eating three of those bars for breakfast. No, um, you, you would be okay. amazed at how filling yeah. they are but, actually. But truth be told, given the calorie count on them, I consider to, if I am really not going to get any breakfast, I probably won't eat another one now because it's coming up on noon. But if it was earlier in the morning, I might eat two of them back to back. That gives me four, 500 calories, and then I would be good to go. So one is a snack, two is a meal. I'll buy into that. <laughs> Three is a good meal. I'll give you that. Um, so anyway, um, that's the story on that. Back to Tammy. Okay, so I have never made stuffed jalapenos. Oh gosh, I've got food all over my dress. Um, I've not made. Where's your apron? I know. It'd be too hot for an apron it today. Would, yeah, it it's of, hot in here today. You think all it's hot? Baking, all the baking. Yeah. yeah. Um, so let me ask you guys this. Do you leave the stem on when you do it? Or will that burn? Will that stem burn in the oven? 
I'm curious about that. Jesse says that Tiffany's recipe uses extra firm tofu. Yes. And, okay. Extra firm. Yeah, she wasn't asking, she was stating. Yes, it uses extra firm tofu. It does. <laughs> JL said if she was doing a cooking demonstration, like I said, it would turn into a mukbang because she would be eating the whole time. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Well, I'm doing the eating off screen over He here. is. He's been constantly eating. I haven't had anything to eat today. But Tom has been constantly... i got my eye on that corn on the cob now. Um, okay, so... Gina, yes, you did miss the answer about cleaning the boards. Um, I'm just going to use no. the, um, the spoon just to get the membrane and the seeds out. We want to remove those for this. If you really like it hot, I guess you could leave them in. But I am removing them. Okay, and I think I have a baking tray. Tom, my baking tray is actually um, in that stack over there, I think, for the Breville. So I'm just cleaning those out. Yeah, it's not, well, it's an OXO. If that's, it, it, that's it. it. Okay. That's the one. And you've so. got um, the parchment paper already in it. I do. It's ready to go. Okay, while you're peeling those, I can talk to, to uh, Gina about the cutting boards again. Perfect. Where do you want this? Um, how about here? Okay. I'll move my, my notebook. So, um, that's a different kind of cutting board you got going on. I do. This is a bamboo cutting board. Yeah. Um, let's see. We have a variety of cutting boards uh, Misty made a mistake use. of handling jalapenos without the gloves and had itching. Um, yes, you do want to use the gloves because the oil and the juice from the jalapenos can really burn you. And you want to be very careful to not touch your face. Joan trims the stem on the jalapenos. Okay, thank you. I was okay. wondering about that. Okay. I will do that. I was afraid that they might burn. Okay. In I, the oven. Let's see. Uh, so, Gina, on back on those cutting boards, what I was saying earlier is uh, we just, when we're done using with them, we take them to the sink and wipe them down with hot water right away. And, and the trick is probably to dry them right away. And then after, you know, a number of weeks, they start getting a little dry. And then I just treat them with the cutting board, uh, uh, which is basically food-grade mineral oil. Uh, or in the case of, the, of our Holland bowls, I'll treat those with the mineral oil wax combination because that seals them better because those are getting so beat up with our chopping with our mezzalunas and, and ulu knives. So, so, but I think the answer to your question is we, we use them and then we rinse them off right away. Uh, and if they need scrubbing with the dish rag a little bit, but we're not like immersing them in the soapy water because the soap takes away, takes off the, the treatment oil. So we're just doing a quick wipe down and an immediate dry off. And, and that's our protocol for that. So back to you, Tammy. Okay, great. I'm almost done with this, you guys. Uh, got, take a camera too, look at those. So, oh, okay, we had a great shot of these all laid up out there. And you never know with jalapenos how hot they're going to be when you buy them. Sometimes they're so mild, I think, oh my gosh, there's no flavor. Well, you know, what's wrong with that? Um, and other times they can be super hot. So you can have a great big one that's not real hot and you can have a little one that is just burning. Jail yeah, well, is using uses baking soda to clean the boards. Is that? I've good? never heard of that. Okay, that's cool. Kind of works as a little scrubby abrasive, kind of like and, and to clean them off. But then, but it's not soap, so it's not going to dry them out. That's so a great I, idea. It kind of makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great idea. See, um, we always are learning from you guys. Uh, Deb's asking where to get those nitrile gloves. They they we don't have a particular. Um, we don't have a particular brand in the Amazon shop. I should pick one out. I know it's very similar and use it. These gloves I actually buy from my, my former place of employment. <laughs> and so I think they're yes. even branded. So they're, they are the, the brand of a, of a dental company that I used to work for. Uh, and so you can't buy those online. Uh, but they are, I think the answer to your question is they are nitrile gloves, not latex because latex yes. is stinky. Some people are allergic to it. The nitrile gloves are essentially inert, and we both get along with them really well. Yes, so. and they're so much better yeah. than, you know, like you can, 
at some yeah. but, stores you can buy gloves for Yeah, I'll grab a pencil cooking. paper and do some research and pick out a, a, a the trick is to get a price uh, a price quality combination that's reasonable because uh, really cheap gloves they break and tear when you put them on uh, but then there's also sometimes on Amazon on gloves and in particularly masks right now you see some price gouging so yeah so I'll take a look at Amazon and, and list something on our miscellaneous page for that so I'm just removing the oh I broke that one the stem trying to be careful so I don't break the stem I mean break the end of the pepper but I did on that one and I'm trying just so we have a nice clean cut because I don't want that stem end to burn. So we'll just trim all of those off. Now I cannot give you this recipe for these because it's in this brand new book and I do not have permission to do so. Glenn said I could do cooking demonstrations and show you guys how to make them but I cannot give you the full recipe you need to buy the book for that and support Glenn's work and we will be ordering uh, probably a dozen of them just to give to people because it has such important information in it okay so now I have these all clean, ready to go. Just trying to make sure I get rid of all the little seeds. And we'll line these babies up. Oh, I feel like I think some of the vapors have gotten my throat. Oh, I think um, I'm going to cough. Okay, yeah, I'll spell that. My trial. <coughs> my trial. <coughs> wow. Okay, that got me a little. Ooh. Okay. So now I'm going to, am I still on camera, Tom? Yes. Okay. I'm going to take a drink. I'm going I'm to take a look at those gloves online and see if there's something I can find that looks reasonable. Just even the, just the vapors from those jalapenos getting, yeah. were starting to get me. Okay. So Tiffany says that um, once drained, crumble your tofu in a bowl with your hands. So that's what I'm going to do here. And you saw how much liquid came out of the tofu, you guys. So, and this is the extra firm. And that is why you need to um, press it, is to get all that extra liquid out of there so that you're left with a nice firm texture and it's not super firm, but this was extra firm tofu. And we just, you know, we want to crumble it up pretty good, I think, um, because the jalapenos aren't all that big, so they're not going to accommodate, like, big chunks. Okay, so, yeah, so here's on the collab. Here's a package somebody's charging. Um, for the gloves, are you talking about? Yeah, where was it? I was just looking. Um, yeah, so here's, here's a company charging $59 for um, how many are they giving you? I don't think we didn't pay that much. No, this is like one box, so that's a ripoff. Yeah. So There's me, so many I'm just gonna, outrageous prices on things online. Okay, here's Amazon's Choice Med Pride Powder Free Nitrile Gloves, package of 100 Okay. $19.99, and that's their Amazon choice. Let me see, make sure it's in stock. And you have to choose your size on these. Tammy's are small. Yep. So um, you have to pay attention to the size. And I'm looking if they show different sizes here. Okay, so now I'm going to add the onion to this. And... Um, it does call for a tablespoon of soy sauce, which of course I don't have, but I am going to use a tablespoon of the teriyaki um, California balsamic vinegar instead for flavor. So Here we go. Let me grab that. Okay, so. Gosh, and I'm almost out. I need to buy more. <clears throat> 
so here's, here's the med pride where they're showing all the sizes on a single page and it is an amazon mainstream product 15, are you showing it 1579 i'm not no i don't have this computer hooked up that way oh okay um although i can uh, it's up to you okay you can, so you can, i'm going to use because I don't have soy sauce because of the sodium content, plus it's not gluten-free. I'm going to do a tablespoon of the California balsamic teriyaki vinegar. And that will give me a really nice flavor. So I'm going to pour that in. as well as a tablespoon of coconut aminos. And so this is about the lowest sodium that you can get of something close to like soy sauce, but it still has quite a bit. So in one teaspoon, there's 90 milligrams. Okay. But as I've told you guys before, I'm not opposed to having a meal or a snack or condiments that have some sodium in it because all of my other food I eat all day long doesn't have any added sodium. So are you switching over? Yeah, I'm ready with the gloves. So I found this on Amazon and um, MedPride Synthetic Nitrile uh, and exam gloves. And that's what Tammy are using is exam gloves. They're not labeled food handler gloves, but they are nitrile, so they are inert. And all the different sizes are right here. So um, so these are, this is gonna be very similar to what Tammy is using uh, currently. So. And it's an Amazon Choice, which means it's a mainstream product for them, and they appear to be in stock, and they're even less than those others. So I'm going to come over here and add these two. Where should I put them? In Nutmeg Notebook Miscellaneous? Well, um, food prep. I think I would put them in with the food prep. Um, well, uh, I don't know, uh, small appliances. No, with food prep. I think in I've got with storage, I've got pantry, I've got bowls and food prep. Oh, food prep, yeah. Yeah. Okay, done. All right. Okay, folks. Thank you for that guidance. I mean, I have gloves in the store. Great. Good job, honey. Now I gotta go back and check and see what's going on over here in the chat feed. Did you guys leave without me? So um, I'm putting smoked paprika in you guys and the one Mm. from uh, local spicery is amazing, amazing. So smoked paprika is different than regular paprika. There is sweet paprika, there's regular paprika. Here, and here's a, um, a little hint for you too. When you're doing spices in something, you know, invariably, like somebody comes to the door or the phone rings or something happens and then you come back and you go, oh my gosh, did I, did I add that or did I not? So you can see that I'm pushing everything over here that I've already added and I'm keeping over here the things that I haven't added yet. That way, especially when the grandkids are here, that way if I get interrupted, I don't have to go, oh my gosh, is that the cumin? Is that the paprika? What's in there? Because if I've moved it over to the left, then I know that I already did it. I already put that in. TS so. is reminding us that the gloves are also, if you watch at Costco, Costco has Tia, has nitrile gloves. Oh, here, that's here, here, good. I'm not, I'm not sure where, but I have seen them in there. Of course, they had them in there a lot at the beginning of the pandemic. but um, Right. But I think they commonly carry them for, for their for their restaurant and business customers. Uh-huh. Okay, something's beeping over here. So. Do you want, this is manual release. Do you want me to do a quick release on this? Yeah, why don't you? Because everything in there. Well, okay. let's give it five minutes. Can you set the timer for five set minutes? Set my watch for five minutes. And then, and then go back to it. Okay. I think that's a good idea. Okay, so I'm just continuing to add um, the seasonings to the tofu chorizo stuffed jalapeno mixture and oh coriander i love coriander and some people like it some people don't let's see can't get this lid off 
but I like it. Okay. This is going to be delicious. And, cumin. and I love cumin. And I have to tell you, the local spicery cumin, some people say cumin, some people say cumin. However you say it, theirs is absolutely the best. And I am a huge fan of cumin or cumin, however you want to say it. It's one of my favorite spices. It really is. I just love it. So I'm just looking and a little bit of tomato paste. And oh, I got to check the muffins, you guys. Yep, they definitely look done. I'm just going to grab these. I want to show you. And so I like them on convection because they just get a little brown and kind of a little crispy on top, but the rest of the muffin will be really nice and moist. Um, I just happen to like that. So it was a happy accident the day that I did it. I thought I had ruined them the day that I did that. And then I thought, well, I have to eat them anyway. Oh my gosh, I liked them even better. So I'm just gonna take them out and set them over here to cool down like on top of the stove and of course wouldn't you know it that today of all days that my oven would be out of commission when so many things i wanted to make were to be baked that is just how it goes i got to see what temperature i need for these uh 350 and i'm not going to do i won't do convection on these it'll be 350 for 20 to 25 minutes it's probably already at that heat let's see it says still says preheating okay so Tom can you hand me I need um, I need a big spatula I think for mixing this up and then I'm gonna need I think you want this stiff uh, one yeah and then I think I'm gonna need just another um, small spoon um, out of there. Teaspoon or soup spoon? I think the I think the teaspoon because I'm afraid that the the soup spoon we'll might over. be too big. Yeah. So so this stuffing that I'm making, if you've just joined us, we are doing an impromptu batch cooking uh, cooking segment today. Extravaganza. Extravaganza because it's too smoky outside here in Northern California for us to go out and do what we usually do on Sunday, which is to walk um, and do it live on Facebook and talk and answer people's questions. So we weren't able to do that today. And I just on a lark said, hey, I have to do my batch prepping. Why don't we just do it live on YouTube and invite people to watch? So this would, of course, go much quicker if I wasn't doing all this talking um, and um, answering questions. So uh, just so you know, it would just be a faster process. It wouldn't normally take me all this time. So I am going to let you take all of this stuff away. And so, and normally I would, just hang on. I would put all of these ingredients away after I got done using them. This is actually clean. Okay, I'll put it away. Okay, that one is clean. This is dirty. Oh shoot, here's what I forgot. This is why I need to check things. I forgot my tomato paste. So let's- It's not too late. It's not. Let's get that tomato paste in there. I'm sure it adds a nice little flavor little punch of These flavor. These seeds are garbage, right? The yeah, that's garbage. And so the tomato paste, I only needed a small amount. So what I do, that came from the freezer, because what I do, if I open up a can of tomato paste and I only need a little bit, then I measure out what's left into one tablespoon amounts and I put it in a container in the freezer 
and that way I can just pop out one tablespoon when I need it. And so that's what I did today. I had some tomato paste frozen, and I just popped that out. Okay, I'm just going to run down Everybody. and make sure that I got all of the ingredients, and I did. And I am just going to do a little taste test to see. Mmm. Oh, that's very good. Mmm. Mm-hmm. That's nice, you guys. I'm releasing that soup. Okay. Are you going to show it? Or? Well, you can keep going. It's okay. going to be a minute for this. All right. It's a big pot. It takes a minute. So, Thomas, you could just move this tray. Then I think they'll be able to see better what I'm doing. Okay. Just going to knock off a couple of the seeds that got there. I'm going to put this here. Okay. And so now we're just going to stuff the jalapenos. I'm going to the cutting board cam here. And she said to use a generous amount. If you're going to show us something, show us over here. So, okay. Oh, that looks good. It does look good, doesn't it? And we have to save some of these for tonight so that we can show them. In fact, I might refrigerate these and actually bake them just before we go live tonight so that they will be fresh for that. So, I think these are going to be really yummy, you guys. I probably should have chopped my onion just a little bit smaller. It's your first time making it. It is. And I've never made any kind of poppers with jalapenos. In How are you going to store and reheat the peppers, Stephanie's asking? Well, I, I'm going to wait, and I think I've just decided to wait and bake them later today so that we have them to show freshly for a, for made a four show. for our 4 o'clock show. Um, I would probably uh, reheat them in the air fryer. So that's, I like to do my veggie burgers. You're going to initially them. cook them in the, in the, in the uh, Just in the, in the brevel. Okay, you're back on I'm going to shut that off. You're back on camera one. Here. Okay, I'm just going to shut that off. So, um, okay, let's see what this soup is doing while you're loading up a few of those. Okay, sounds good. I'm going to, um, actually, I'm going to let you, you're still on camera loading those until I get this resituated so everybody's not taking such a bumpy ride. I think it would be fun to um, heat up some chipotle nacho cheese sauce and pour that over the top of these after they've baked. Aren't they going to be hot enough as it is? Maybe. That'd be a lot of heat, wouldn't it? I don't know. I just think it would be good. These are really cute. Really cute, you guys. Okay, so we've got mystery stew coming up here. <laughs> I don't know what It'll it's probably gonna... need to be a, have a stir. i got to give it a stir. And we'll have to see if it has enough... Uh, liquid and for that you know kind of a dump soup you could add more starch to it could add okay. wild rice or right. anything what to it are we okay we're on that I'm coming back to camera one okay we're over here now on this guy yeah Oh, it's still bubbling in here. <coughs> Excuse me. Look and see, make sure that the squash is fully I'll cooked. I'll peel one right off the top here. Make sure it's Set it on the cutting cooked. board. 
Of course, just sitting in there, it'll finish cooking too. I think there's enough water in here. What do you guys think on camera? I would be fine with that. I should come see. It looks good. Come see. Okay. I wish Tiffany was on so I could ask her if I'm filling these too full. Let's see. <coughs> oh yes, that looks wonderful. That looks really good. Uh-huh. Nice. Well, we could make, um, we could cook like five of them or something just to test it and then save the rest for later. So we could maybe make some. I'm coming back to you here. Okay. So Tiffany isn't on watching, is she? No, I've only seen Jesse. Okay. And Randy lives in Tennessee, so she's probably trying to figure out what to do about the store about now. Yeah. Hope everybody's yeah, doing okay. On, Between storms and fires, it's crazy. Wow, these really look good. There's a pie in the book too that looks really good. That would be fun to make with mango. Has an oatmeal crust, and then. Mm. That squash is completely done. It's oh, soft. Great, great. This is good. It's done. Nice. I think that's going to be really tasty. You want me to take the, the uh, liner out so it can start its cooling off process? Sure. So, so what do you think, you guys? Oh, wow. Mmm. <coughs> Some of this spices or the jalapeno. Am I overstuffing them? I've never made poppers before. Is that overstuffed? Is it going to, like, collapse on me when I bake it? I think that's too much. You think it's too much? But yeah. look at, I have so much filling. Okay, make it less. Okay, I'll make I'll it less. The screen and see what people say. Okay. I'm afraid that it's like going to bubble over and then and they're going to be. This recipe of stuffed peppers, it can be any stuffed pepper. Right? Yeah. Let me see. I might have too much going. I'm going to take a little bit off. Uh, Susanna Ball, if I earlier up in the feed, I, I put a link to the muffin recipe, but if you just Google nutmeg notebook, muffins, off, banana oat muffins, your computer will take you straight to the recipe. But I did put a link up above in the chat feed. Uh, but if you came on more recently, you may not have that available. So just just go okay. for it. You go to uh, yeah, just go to nutmegnotebook.com and uh, just search it on Google nutmeg notebook. Banana old muffins, and that will come up absolutely. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I turned my mic off when I was having a. I turned my mic off when I was having a coughing, sneezing attack over there. So. So I was just saying the banana of muffin oat mix is, uh, searchable on Google just by doing nutmeg notebook banana oat muffins, or quinoa banana oat muffins. Are you on camera or are you talking off camera? I'm talking off camera because I, I can't keep up with all the different camera angles we're doing right now. We got, we got three cameras and a computer connection going here. That's so, crazy. So I'm, I'm breaking the rule of speaking off camera. I'm sorry. Okay. So I was asking you guys, how stuffed should I make these? De Deborah Barr says normally, uh, I normally do not stuff them that full. Okay. That's what I was thinking. So I'm going to cut back and make it not so full. How no. about like more like this? Is that better? How's that look? Let me see that one. That would look more normal to me. What do you guys think? Let her know. Okay. Infinite love and gratitude. I should be audible now. Uh, I had my mic turned off earlier for a sneeze attack I was having. So, uh, but I forgot to turn it back on. My apologies. Let okay. me know that you can hear me now, though. I'm just going to take some of this off so they won't be overly stuffed. It shows me on the meter over here. Um, that's coming through. Yes. Okay. It's good now. Great. I'm going to have a lot of the stuffing left over. Stuff something else. Yeah. Might bake it or might just um, cook it up in the skillet 
and then have it be like a crumble uh -huh. to go on top of salads. I think that would be good. Okay, I'm just redoing some of these, you guys. Uh, Melissa, uh, Melissa's asking, she just came on, what it is you're making, if you can... Uh... Yeah, so I'm making the tofu chorizo stuffed jalapenos out of Glenn Mercer's new book, um, Food is Climate. We're going to be interviewing him later today at 4 o'clock. And so I'm just doing my batch cooking today, and we just decided to invite you all into our kitchen with us while we do our batch cooking today. So that's what's happening. So this book, the book, Food is Climate, is available on Amazon right now. And it, um, it's a great book, very informative about climate change and the impact that having a vegan diet can have on the planet. And I'll have a um, text link of that in the show notes. And we will be interviewing him at 4 p.m. Pacific time today. And so I just thought it would be fun to make a recipe, maybe two if I can, um, before this evening. There, I think that looks pretty good. We'll see what happens. I may, I may still have them overstuffed. So we've already, um, if you've just joined us, we have baked Yukon Gold Potatoes, Hannah Yams, Japanese Sweet Potatoes, Quinoa Banana Oat Muffins, Corn on the Cob, and I made up a soup on the fly that um, I think is going to be pretty tasty, just with um, things that we had in the fridge that needed to be used up today and made into something. And so, um, not our usual batch cooking day. My uh, big wall ovens are not working. And we had the repairman here yesterday and he has to order the board for it. And so I'm without those two ovens. And of course, everything that I needed to make today seemed like it needed to go in an oven. So we've used the Breville and the Ninja. And I'm so grateful that I have both um, in order to do all this cooking. So you can, um, I'll have Tom, you can hold up this book. I can't touch it because my hands are dirty. Okay, I'm just... But um, the Food is Climate book by Glenn Mercer yeah, just I... became available this week. Okay. And I have recipes in it, as well as Crocs in the Kitchen, the Giroudi family, um, it's Dylan. It's in the show notes now. I put, it's in the show notes. Yeah, I just put recipes from any of our YouTube friends. Yeah. What, so, am I, what am I doing for you? Holding up the book? Yeah, hold up the book so they can see. Okay. And maybe we'll go ahead and bake a few of these. That would be fun. Yeah, Food is Climate by Glenn Mercer. And like Tammy said, it's, it's chock full of recipes to support uh, uh, healthy for you eating and healthy for the planet eating for many of our YouTube mm -hmm. peers and friends. Yep. So, almost done with this. Are there any questions for me, Tom? I'll you guys can ask me questions if you wish. I gotta come back, I'm over here on video details. I gotta come back. So, and I still need to make our, we have a new recipe for vegan ranch dressing. And I still have to make a batch of that yet. Yeah, Misty Blue's asking, do you listen to YouTube videos while she meal preps? I would say almost always. Yeah, quite often. Um, I'll listen to Chef AJ or Dylan. Chef Bravo. Um, I'll listen to, you know, to some different people. Yeah, if Dylan's on, you're probably listening to him. Yeah. And then we pick up some of our other folks as we go along here and there too. Yeah, I don't have a lot of time to watch YouTube videos, but I can watch them when I'm cooking. Um, you know, I can turn them on and have them on while I'm cooking. But I don't, ha I don't have time to, to like sit and watch videos. So I'm usually moving, um, doing yeah. stuff.
So I have and, a and lot Melissa, left. Melissa's asking what you're drinking. Yeah, I'm drinking Beet Boost. And um, that's what this is. It's called Beet Boost. Uh, we have an affiliate link to them. Oh, that's good. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn that oven back on. Yeah. And we will do the Nutri a little bit. That makes Beet Boost uh, link is is down in the show notes. And Tammy does have a 15% discount code, uh, which is Nutmeg15. So if you go to Nutri Gardens and pick out which Beet Boost she uses, the uh, the original, um, what's it called now? Your Beet Boost. Um, let me get the. So anyway, 15% discount with the Nutmeg15 code on that. They changed the name somewhere along the line, so I don't remember what the Are name was. Are you on was. camera or am I on camera? I'm on camera. It's revitalized now. Um, it's a blurry here. I have to hold it back here. So it's, uh, I'm on a camera that doesn't have uh, automatic focus. Tammy's camera is autofocus. Mine does not. So yeah, Beat Boost is what she's drinking. Okay. So I have quite a bit of the um, stuffing left over, and I'll just cook that up separately. And um, I'm just going to use the pizza pan that fits in the Breville. And I'm just going to do. Oh, Randy. Randy, how are you doing? Randy's here. These. Hey, Randy. How are you? Are you getting wet yet? I'm just going to do a few of these. These I think I'll save for tonight. Melissa's asking, do you have any other tips or hacks for when your GI is feeling off? Yes. Um, probiotic for sure. And um, if you get the ones that have to be refrigerated like from a health food store or Whole Foods and they can help you um, choose one. And I just try to like for some reason beans uh, just really upset my system sometimes. It started happening about two years ago. I had to have like three rounds of antibiotics for an infection, just boom, 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 that, you know, just didn't want to go away. And that just wreaked havoc on my digestive tract. And so every once in a while since then, I mean, after that, after I'd had the rounds of antibiotics and I was taking probiotics at the same time and really trying to stay on top of it, um, it just, I just couldn't, I couldn't eat beans for a very long time. I mean, like months and months where I couldn't eat beans because they just uh, wreaked havoc on me. They would just go right through me. And so, um, there's a, um, a tea that I like. Let me show that to you. It's um, Heather's tummy tea. It's a fennel tea. And this I find to be very, very soothing. So Chef AJ did an interview with um, the gal who started this company. So you could Google that, it's on YouTube. And this is Heather's tummy teas. And this is for like, I don't know, people that have IBS and all different kinds of problems. And she also has a powder that you can buy that you um, can mix with water and it helps your um, digestive tract as well. And this is just organic fennel seeds and then you make tea with it. It's in tea bags and it's delicious. And I just, I find it to be very soothing um, for my tummy. So, um, I just didn't have time to get that made today, but, uh, and you can find this online. You can order Heather's, uh, tummy teas. I have it on our Amazon store as well. So that's very helpful. What category do you suppose? Um, probably in pantry items. Okay. That's probably in the pantry items. Okay. So I've got those, um, little poppers are ready to go and those are going to go in the oven and then um, these I think I'm going to put if you could give me a container I'm going to put these in a container and pop these in the fridge until um, this afternoon and we'll make these before we go live at what, four. What kind? Uh, just 
couple of these flat ones or only got one? Yeah, that'll work. Whatever you've got there. Just You can get three across can you get six in there? Three across and three no. I think so. Five. I can do one along this side. Well, I'll need another container no matter what, so that'll work. So these we're going to bake before we do the 4 o'clock show today, How and that'll work. How are we going to remember that? How are we going to remember that? Well, even if, we have, even if I forget, we can do it at the beginning oh, okay. and pull them out of the oven. Or do these in the meantime? In the fridge. I'll okay, I've got the corn the ready to go here too if you want to put okay. that in there. Yep. So right. four in each container. These are the Ziploc nine and a half cup containers. Can go up there. The corn can go back there. That's good. Oh, here I want to show you guys. So when we uh, went to make the video, oh, that's ready. Hang on. Let me put these in the oven because the oven is ready. And Tom, are are you um, Mike? Yes. Because you're washing dishes and that'll be making noise. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, when we made the video for the vegan ranch dressing the other day, I was just, you know, in the moment talking about everything. And I was talking about the herbs and I threw them in. And I don't normally do that. I like to pulse them at the end. And the reason is it turns a very very green I'll just pour some in here so you can see it turns a very green <laughs> color when you do that and so so we've been eating this green ranch it still tastes the same and it's super smooth and creamy but um, that is what happens if you throw the herbs in at the beginning um, when you make that but we love the new ranch dressing. Okay. Are you using this iPad here? Are you using this? So, no, you, let's shut it off. I thought I was going to and then I didn't. Oh, except that, you know what, um, I, I need it for, I'm going to make the ranch dressing now. Oh, you are? Okay. So, if you'll bring me that, even that container's fine. Where's, just, the, where's the clear ones? Where's the clear containers? Um, or in the pantry? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that'd be more fun, the stainless steel. Okay. I'm going to clean that cutting board. Do you board. want the big one or the little one? Uh, um, the little one works fine for Oh, it. remember I put it down below with the pressure pots. Oh, you did? It's here. Okay, so I'm just going to bring the recipe up on my iPad here, yeah. you guys. Yeah, so here, I, I don't know if Jesse's still on. Jesse, we went ahead and did this. We got the stainless steel. And I didn't know it's thermal. It's double walled, and so it keeps hot stuff hot and cold stuff cold. So this is way more cool than I knew it was going to be. So, but since we're doing a show and tell, we'll do a clear one, our old one, so that we can see the insides of what's going on there. So yeah, like the new stainless steel uh, Vitamix carafe. Mm -hmm. So um, here we go. It is nice. Do you want the Vitamix base over there too? Or are you gonna blend it? You're gonna blend it there, aren't you? Um, I'm. Uh, well. Yeah. I guess so. Although it does make a lot of noise. Yeah, but you. Well, I need the cutting board, honey. Yeah, I'll turn it down while you're doing the main cutting. You want the big cutting board or the oh that one? This one will work. Okay. I just need the. I gotta grab my ingredients here and. I don't have everything out that you I You didn't need. have your pre-built tray. No, because this is batch prepping. This is how we do it. And I like this needs to be turned around. Actually, let's set it over here where it can plug in. There isn't a place for it to plug in there. So, as you can tell, we really uh, decided to do this on the fly. So, we didn't have time to think it all through and um, have everything staged and prepped. So yeah. that's why it's called you an, show how that opened up and stuff? an impromptu. So now I'm making the 
the vegan ranch dressing because we've almost used ours all up. And so this is a 12 ounce box of the silken oh, tofu. Oh. Whoops, of the silken tofu. And I'm not, um, you don't drain it. The little bit of liquid that's in there we want. We just put that in there. It's fine. And then um, I'm using the oat milk. You can use whatever kind of milk you want, whatever kind of plant milk. What and I need the, the measure back there. That, yeah. And if you would rinse that out and dry it, because I'll need that. Can I lick it? So, <laughs> no, because I want you to wash it. Don't be licking it. He's like having a little kid in the kitchen. What are we doing with this bucket of soup over so here? It will, we're letting it cool okay. so that we can um, put it in our super, super cubes. cubes. So I have a half a cup of water because I'm using the Joy oat milk powder and I only need half a cup. So that one tablespoon of Joy powder is going in there. And did you remind everybody this is our just released um, video yeah you, you you're telling them too um i'm out of my onion and garlic powder from local spicery so i gave you that one tray of stuff did you take it i think it has garlic yeah. powder on it yes it's here. <laughs> ah, so funny so I need a teaspoon of garlic powder and onion powder. No, uh, there's no teaspoon in here. There's an eighth of a two teaspoon. No, how about the big jar? The big jar. Oh. Okay. Here you so go. I said I was out of the local spicery yeah. one. So then I have to use this. So a teaspoon of onion powder and a teaspoon of garlic powder. And I need two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And I keep that in my fridge. I also need a clove of garlic. And I told Tom I'm going to have to teach him how to make this because he likes it. And since he's eating it along with me, we're going through it pretty fast. So two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. I tried lemon juice you guys and I just didn't like how lemon juice tasted in it it was the just the wrong for me the wrong flavor uh, with this and then uh, salt substitute we like the well your world stardust and I'm gonna use a teaspoon of that um. but you could use any kind of salt substitute if you use salt you could use salt if you have table tasty, you can use table tasty. Um, you don't have to have this to make this dressing. Here's that, you were talking about the Joy Oat Milk earlier. Yes. Stephanie's asking, um, uh, is the Joy get... Oat Milk powder affordable and how is it stored after opening? Uh, it's shelf stable. Okay. You can just um, leave it on your shelf okay just looking for my chia seeds and um, so these are white chia seeds I like to use the white ones for a light colored sauce or dressing just because it doesn't make little black flecks in it but it's fine you can yeah. use them you can if find that's the pricing uh, Stephanie of Joy Milk on if you follow in the show notes the link to the Joy site the whole milk assisted there. I don't recall how much it was myself. I don't recall either. Um, you know, we just got our first package of it and um So a medjool date and I'm actually these are frozen so I'm gonna heat it up in the microwave because that just helps it to thaw out a bit. <laughs> this might be coming from one of the old shows. Gina says, Oh no, you touched your face. With so, this. Because Dylan has talked about that he'll get a comment from somebody that he touched his face. And he says, well, he's the one eating the food. That's right. So, 
So I think, so I've gotten, I think Gina's having some fun. I've gotten complaints from people when I've worn gloves. Why are you wearing gloves if you're the one that's going to eat the food? And I've gotten complaints from people when I don't wear gloves. Like, why aren't you wearing gloves? Uh, well, because do you wear gloves when you're cooking for yourself? I just like, really? Really? Okay, and I want some fresh Oh, ground. you've washed your gloves since you handled the jalapenos. I so did. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. I washed them. I used soap over at the sink. So I have one date and I just heated it up because that just makes it really nice and soft. And you always want to make sure that you get that little pit out of there. And that is sticky. And some freshly ground black pepper. You could use white pepper if you want, but I don't have white peppercorns. So I've got the tofu, the milk, the apple cider vinegar, the garlic clove, the garlic powder, the onion powder, the salt substitute, the white chia seeds and the black pepper and one date. And so this is going to go on the blender first and we're going to get this nice and um, creamy smooth before we add the chopped herbs. Hey, just I'm to give people a heads up, I'm, I'm going to mute while um, Tammy's blending and then I'm going to stay right on the button and I'll unmute when we when we come back on again so okay let me know you guys when you're got that go. i'm ready i'll yeah get it started then i'll go ahead and mute when you go to high speed i just like that date to go first on okay okay so you can see how really nice and creamy what i that got the is. camera zoomed way in for the blender hold oh. on you're not on camera okay let's so nice there and we creamy. go and now i'm chopping the herbs for the to get the fresh herbs and you guys i made this like a dozen different ways and I tried it with dried herbs, and I personally did not care for it with the dried herbs. So I just don't like how those ends look. <laughs> Randy's being smart. I wrote, I put in comments where muted for Blenda, and Randy says, what? I can't hear you. <laughs> Smarty. Okay. That's good. She's clever. She okay. is a clever girl. So any plant milk will work for this, right? Any, you can use whatever plant milk. I did use soy milk, and I did not like soy milk, though, because it was too powerful. It just was too, then that combined with the tofu, for me, was just way too much soy flavor. Um, it was just overpowering, and then that's what I was tasting instead of tasting the, um, the ranch dressing flavor. So I didn't like it with that, but I did use almond milk. I'm sure cashew would be fine. We just don't have cashew because our grandson is allergic to cashews, but you could use cashew milk as well. Um, that would be fine. And 
uh, almond milk was also very good. But he, the, see, the powder versus, we use the joy milk, and the powder is just easier to use than the um, almond base because the almond base is, you know, sticky, and this is just a powder, and it's just easier. So, and I like the flavor of the oat because the oat is slightly sweet, as, as, as is the almond. I'm going to close this door so people aren't distracted. But you can use whatever um, kind of plant milk you like. It works. And so now I'm just going to chop up my dill. And, you know, I don't put it in at the beginning because I just don't want the ranch dressing to turn green. You know, we don't think of ranch dressing as being green, right? We want it to be white with the little flecks of the herbs in it oh my gosh the dill is dill is so amazing this smells incredible just incredible so i am a big fan of dill so i really like it in this dressing if you aren't as big of a fan of dill you could probably use more italian parsley than dill um, i did i looked up standard American diet recipes to see what people did in that, um, to see how a standard American diet ranch dressing is made, made with a lot of um, mayonnaise, buttermilk, uh, sour cream. Uh, it was amazing what was used in them. But I was trying to get an idea of how to do it. I purposefully did not look at other vegan recipes because I wanted to create my own and not be influenced by anyone else's. But yesterday, Tom and I did, just for fun, looked up vegan recipes and it's for ranch dressing and it seemed like most people were using like vegan mayonnaise. So I need... There's my measure. Oh, there's just a little bit of that powder left in there. Okay, so I'm going to do a tablespoon of the parsley and a tablespoon of chives. And the fresh herbs just really make this dressing sing. And then two tablespoons of the dill Ooh, and I'm just making it with the dill just gonna make it and we are buying a lot more <laughs> fresh dill because I'm making this like twice a week okay so then I just want to pulse it but let me grab my spatula over here and this is my blender spatula if you don't have one of these you guys you need to get one see how it's angled so that you can get down in there and get everything and so I'm just pushing down what's up on the sides down in and then I'm just gonna pulse it a little bit to incorporate those, but I don't want it to turn green. And so, and I'm turning it down because I had it all the way up, and so I'm turning it down. Okay. Such a precise process there. Well, I don't know. Is that it? That's it. Because see, it's just enough just to incorporate it, chop them up a little bit, but it didn't turn it green, which is what I wanted to accomplish. I just didn't want it to turn green. It tastes fine when it's green, but it's just not as pretty. Um, you know, if you want to use it like over a baked potato or... Um, like I had, I did some asparagus, fresh asparagus last night 
in the air fryer and I had uh, a drizzle of it over that and that, that was delicious. So now I just need to get a jar and this makes about 20 ounces of dressing. Oh, I did find those jars and put them on the Amazon page. Oh, the you 22 did? Ounce. Yeah, they're yeah. on there now. Great. I did that yesterday. So the, this is the size jar that I use. There's usually a little bit that um, maybe won't fit. Let's see. No, this jar it fits. Okay. Um, I'm usually making it when I'm needing it for a salad. I will tell you that the flavor is better the next day or make it in the morning and let it chill all day and then have it for evening. It's better after it sets in the refrigerator for a few hours because then all those wonderful flavors have time to mingle and it's just so much tastier. And you know, we're layering the flavors when we do the fresh garlic and the garlic powder. If you can't find chives, you could use the green tops from scallions or onions, green onions. That would work too. You just want that little bit of subtle flavor. So there is... Deborah Bars, thank you for creating that recipe. You're so welcome. Has anybody tried it yet? So there is the ranch oh my gosh some folks up above early on a couple mm. of hours ago we're talking about that they were going to be making it so. yeah it smells so good you guys it's just oh, i just love it so tom if you could get rid of that for me that would be great and i don't need to keep whatever this is laying here um, you put it in a little, not really. We have so much okay. of that parsley. I think that we're fine. And then I like to put a plastic lid on that. So I'm not real fond of the lids that come with the canning jars. I really like these plastic lids. And then this just goes in the fridge. And of course we have that other one that we need to use up first. The one that has a tinge of green to it and I'm done with that food processor. I'm going to use that and I'm done with the Vitamix. Done with the Vitamix. So the other thing that I want to make and I this I have not published this recipe yet. This is for some uh, smoky mushrooms and I just like to make these and then have them to use as uh, toppers for different things oh my goodness look at how beautiful these are Deb made the dressing <gasps> yesterday yeah did you like it she said it's delicious Thank you. That makes me so happy. Look at these yeah, Jocelyn poppers. Jocelyn folded the herbs into the dressing by hand and didn't, you know, so it didn't turn green. Oh, rather nice. Than, rather than pulsing, so that worked. Um, look at these. These poppers turned out beautiful. Oh, look at that. Wow, those are gorgeous. Here, we get a okay. close up. I almost, I feel like I have two gloves on. I almost grabbed it with my just my oh. plastic glove that would be a serious those mistake. Those do look nice. Thank you Tiffany. Thank you Tiffany. These are beautiful. I cannot wait. And I think that's about the right amount of stuffing. More would be too much. Yeah that's just the right amount. So thank you for your guidance on that you guys. So I learned something new from you guys today. All right so um, we're anxious. We'll try those as soon as they um, thaw out just a little bit. So, Tom, if you could find the hickory smoked vinegar, California balsamic hickory smoked vinegar for me. Okay. In there, that would be awesome. And I'll need a couple more seasonings, but I'm going to go ahead and take these gloves off. Okay, so the other thing that I want to make are these mushrooms. And I, you guys are just going to love these. These are so good. They are so good. I'm just Aha. getting a dish I found here. It. 
so I can mix everything up. And so anyway, so you guys, you, this, this was a find, that, that shelf that's just above my hand there, that whole shelf, the whole, it's all, that's all flavored vinegars. So we have a little bit of a vinegar, flavored vinegar problem going on here. Hey! <laughs> So what anyway, are you saying? What so are you saying, So that's why it was. Tom? That was why it was go find. What are you saying? Here's your vinegar. Okay. I'm not saying anything. Thank you. What All I right. do want to do is is uh, uh, I need to check your mic battery at some point when we've got something else on camera. Okay. So, um, maybe I can do a close-up. Well, you can be a, a larger Corel dish. Okay. While you're doing those mushrooms, I'll work on the on the microphone just to check your batteries. Okay. I'll use this. Thank I'll you. use the cutting board cam. And I got to get it lined up. I think. Okay. I got to line it up a little bit better. So this is just going to be. Yeah. So we're just we're, we've only got the we're looking at the board. That's all we can see. Oh, you're measuring over there. You're weighing something up. Yeah. Just eight ounces. I've just got, I got to grab a paper towel. I always have one when I handle mushrooms too because sometimes they're wet. I don't know what's on the floor there. Okay. Whoops. So what I do with these is I just. It's still showing full. So. Okay. I just wipe them off. So, in case, you know, I don't run them under water because we just don't want to get them moist. Um, that's not a good idea. So Tom's going to fix my mic here. So I'm just wiping them off to make sure, you know, that they don't have any residue on them. And then I'm just going to slice these. Everybody can still hear me? Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's eight ounces. Um, if I was doing them in my full size oven, I would. Um, Tom, can you wash this for me? Yes. Wash the knife for me. How many jalapenos did you use up on that stuffed jalapeno recipe? Um, it called for 10, and I think I only had 7. Okay, so that's why you had extra batter, too. And there would have been extra anyway, because I just couldn't find any bigger um, jalapenos. So, I'm going to put that over there. Okay. So, um, thank you. And I'm going to need, um, I'm going to need a bowl to mix everything. It's going to have to be a big, bigger bowl. Okay, I've got this little clear one. In. I've got the small. That'll work. Clear bowl here. So I'm just slicing these, as you can see. Are you done with this guy? No. What did you take? Oh, yeah, I'm done with that one. So if I had my full-size oven, I would do a whole pound of these, but I don't have my full size oven. And so I'm having to use, you know, the small, I don't like the look, how that looked. So I'm, I'm trimming that off. back on camera one. Okay. And so I'm just doing eight ounces. But if you can do a full tray in a full size oven, then you, I would go ahead and do a pound of these at a time because these are so delicious. And I'm just, I'm going to bake these and they're gonna turn out amazing. You could probably do them on the stove top too, but the day that I developed this recipe, I didn't have time to stand there and um, stir them. And so I thought, you know what, I'm just making this marinade and it's just gonna go, I'm gonna put these in the oven. So this is the um, California balsamic smoked hickory balsamic. And this doesn't. This was one of the prototype bottles that. Um, when you were taste testing for Thomas. Yeah, when I was taste testing for Thomas. So I'm going to do two tablespoons of this. If you don't have the hickory smoked one, you could just use. Um, you kind of need the sweet balsamic, and you could use two tablespoons 
of um, a sweet kind of reduced balsamic, a sweeter one, just a regular one, and then add maybe like a quarter of a teaspoon of um, smoke flavoring, an eighth to a quarter. Just depends on what you like. Okay, so yeah, I touched my face. Um, no, that, uh, Jesse explained that they were concerned that you still had jalapeno juice on your face. Oh, dogs, okay. You burn your face with the jalapeno juice. No, so, I washed those. So I, I misinterpreted. Oh, okay. You know, because well, I have gotten complaints from people, but you know, I'm yeah, cooking. No, no, people were concerned so, for your well-being. Got it. Got it. Okay, so now I'm going to do half a teaspoon of garlic powder and half a teaspoon of onion powder. I guess that did have a dispensing lid. I missed that. Okay, and then I need mustard powder and chipotle chili powder. So I've got to go back in the pantry and chipotle chili powder. And what did I say? Can't even remember what I'm doing. Uh, and mustard powder. And I think mustard seed ground. Okay, so here we have that. Uh, so I'm using an eighth of a teaspoon of the chili powder. So this is the one from Local Spicery. Um, chili pepper morat, morita chipotle. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it, this is fantastic. So flavorful. And then the mustard powder, I have to open it and get that open. That can go in my trash bin. And I'm doing a quarter of a teaspoon of that. And here's my quarter of a teaspoon. You know, I wish they would make these so you could read them easier. They're so hard to read. So here we go. That is it. And then we just need to stir it up. I'm just going to go with what I've got here. Just use the measuring spoon. Although I think I'm going to need a spatula, Tom. I go through so many dishes, you guys, when I am cooking. Do you? Yeah, just a small one's great. And so this is what that looks like. And oh my goodness, it smells amazing. I am going to taste it. Mm. It tastes amazing. It is just so wonderful. Oh, very good. Mm. That chipotle powder got the back of my throat. Mmm. It's so good. I'm going to preheat the oven to 400. And get that going. Not convection. I just want the regular oven. There we go. Not convection. And then I just want to make sure I get all of that yummy balsamic vinegar. Tom, I just had brain fade. What's the brand of that, um, the, other, the other balsamic vinegar? Napa Valley Naturals. If you don't have the um, California balsamic, you could use the Napa Valley Naturals Grand Reserve because it's thick and syrupy and sweet. You could use two tablespoons of it and then a little bit of the liquid smoke to taste. I would start with like an eighth to a quarter of a teaspoon. It's pretty powerful stuff. These are just so beautiful. I'm really impressed with Tiffany's recipe. Can't wait to try it. Now I'm just going to pour this over the mushrooms. And like I said, you are not going to find this recipe posted anywhere yet because I've been making it but I just haven't had time to make the video or to uh, post do a blog post for the recipe and then I just 
What are you making now? I've been washing dishes. I don't know what you're making. I am making smoky mushrooms. And these are just a really delicious side dish. Um, I put them on my salads. I put them on top of veggie burgers. I put them on top of a baked potato. They are just so good. And these are baby portobello mushrooms that I'm using. And, you know, I like them because they are just, they have a nice texture to them. They stand up to being baked or sauteed. And we're able to buy organic ones at Costco. That's how pretty they look. And then I'm just going to spread them out on my pan. These are going into a preheated 400 degree oven for 20 minutes. And just the regular setting, not on convection. And they are so yummy. You could just, you know, use them on anything. They would be good however you want to use them. They're yummy on your salads too though. And then I just want to spread them out. Kind of like them to be in a single layer. So you can see like if you want to do a whole pan, uh, I mean a whole pound of them, you really do need to do them in a regular size oven where you can use a large rimmed cookie sheet. I'm muted. I'm going to be washing this. Okay, Tom's muted because he's washing dishes. Oh, I'm going to run the blender for a moment. Oh, he's going to run the blender. So that's one way that we like to clean the blender is we put warm water in it with dish soap. Here, fully blended dish water. <laughs> and I just got to dump this out, rinse it and dry it, and I'm done. Yeah, it's a great way to clean it. If you do it right away, if you let it set, then everything sticks. And then you have to get in there with a dishcloth. Okay, so I've got those pretty well spread out. And it is so delicious, you guys. These are just, they have that smokiness, the garlic and the onion powder, the sweetness from the balsamic. They are just so good. So Tom's gonna check. Um, We're just taking a little and then that little bit of chipotle chili powder. Fun. I could eat them now. They're, They're spicy. Raw. I know. You haven't gotten to have any of them because I always eat them. Well, I'm going to cook them for them. 20 minutes. Do they get pretty dried out in that process? They don't. They really don't. Okay. They don't because, you know, mushrooms have a lot of moisture in them. Plus, we have the glaze on there. So, no, they really don't. Um, it's ready. I'm going to go ahead and put them in. And bump that back up to 20 minutes. And come on. There we go. Um, and those will be delicious. So if you guys want the recipe again, let me go over it because it's not printed anywhere yet. But this I will. This is a free recipe. This is a freebie. Give, give me a chance to get there. Get your pencil and paper. Yeah. Unpublished recipe alert. Oh, I should rinse my hands real quick. Okay. You should come over and try one of the poppers while I rinse my hands. Okay. I'm going to try that little one. And you try that little one while I rinse. I don't know. Oh, there's a little tiny zucchini one. Wow. Isn't that cute? Yeah, it is. Do I need to have a glass of water ready? I don't know if it'll be spicy hot. It's not too hot. It's there. They, they shouldn't be spicy, too tea, spicy. Yeah. yeah. Mm, it's kind of a wakes you up a little bit. You could put hot sauce on them if you wanted them to be yeah. spicier. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's a nice offset. The, the stuffing with the heat of the thing gives you kind of a smooth and spicy at the same time. Nice. They're good. Okay, so I got my hands washed so I can Ooh. tell them. Okay, okay. so oh, are you wait. guys are you guys ready for the smoky mushrooms? I don't have a name for them yet, so that's just, I'm calling them smoky mushrooms. 
So eight ounces of portobello mushrooms that have just been sliced and two tablespoons of California balsamic hickory smoked vinegar, balsamic vinegar. Or if you don't have that, two tablespoons of a low acidity reduced vinegar. You could use like the Napa Valley Naturals Grand Reserve. That would be great. And if you use that, then add just a little bit of liquid smoke to taste. Half a teaspoon of onion powder, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, an eighth of a teaspoon of chipotle chili powder. I'm going really fast. You want to repeat those teaspoons a, again? A quarter teaspoon of mustard powder. You can do fresh ground black pepper. I forgot, but you can do fresh ground black pepper if you wish. And then mix that up. Mix that with the mushrooms, 400 degrees for 20 minutes. Can you step back through the, the spices again? Are they asking for that? Yeah, but you went pretty fast. Okay. Eight ounces of mushrooms, two tablespoons of hickory smoked vinegar from California balsamic, half a teaspoon of onion powder, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, an eighth of a teaspoon of chipotle chili powder. I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but it is really hot. At least the one from uh, Local Spicery is. And it's just enough to give it a little kick. And then a quarter teaspoon of mustard powder. And if you didn't have mustard powder, you could use some, you know, mustard. And a little bit of freshly ground black pepper if you wish. Put in a preheated 400 degree oven on bake for 20 minutes. But if you have enough space to do a full sheet, do it in your big oven because the mushrooms do shrink down and I'll end up with a, a small container of them. And so you'll probably want to make that bigger. So here are the, oh, and this, you guys, this is, you know, people ask me, why do you call it Nutmeg Notebook? Oh, it's got food on it. I've got some of the muffin mix on it. <laughs> well, that's appropriate. That's, that's, that is. So this is, this is where I write recipes when I'm testing recipes. So like there is multiple um, in here vegan ranch because I tried so many different ways. So, oops, lots of different. There's a cream of asparagus soup that I made. And what are all the tabs for? Tom liked it. I, I, I write on them what what the recipe where they are pizza crust i have i get so many requests for a gluten-free oil-free low sodium pizza crust i have tried and tried and tried and i and some of them are okay but none of them have been absolutely delicious yet i have a chocolate chia pudding i haven't gotten that posted yet i make that a lot we really like it here's another vegan ranch dressing so that's your recipe. cookbook it's just not published there you go Oh, an enchilada casserole. We could just photocopy that. And that we haven't gotten, <laughs> gotten that published yet either. So, so anyway, oh, see, and I make notes. Needs work because it didn't turn out. You know, I make little notes what to try different next time. And then the next time I, I'll What's pull it out. What's that big X there on that one page? Uh, I was fail? trying to make a pumpkin upside down pie like one that I made on the standard American diet. And it was a fail. So let's see the X. <laughs> and so just, I X'd it, it out. It gets X'd out. <laughs> it got X'd out. I was like, yeah, that's a fail. I'm not trying that again. Um, you know, it's hard because you end up, if it doesn't turn out, you end up uh, wasting a lot of money on ingredients. And I, you know, I made a lot um, for the ranch dressing. Okay, so here's Are the... Are we going to be done after you do those... Pretty soon. Peel those muffins here's the, here's the muffins. Here's what the muffins look like. And you see, because I allowed this to cool, so now they're coming out quite easily. And they are, they are a dense muffin, so, you know, somebody who isn't used to eating healthy would think, oh my gosh, those are, you know, really dense. But they are delicious, they're hearty, they're filling, like one is plenty. Um, because it's basically, it's like eating baked oatmeal, if you think about it. And they freeze up beautifully as well. So we have those made. 
Wow, I feel like we have such a mess here. Uh, so we made the muffins, we made the poppers, we made that um, impromptu soup just out of things that I had in the fridge. And like I said, like I'll probably add wild rice or brown rice or oat groats to it when I go to have it, but doesn't that look delicious? It looks so good. We baked the potatoes. So we've got the potatoes baked and we made the salad dressing. So we have that. And then the other thing that I do on batch cooking day so, do you want to bring those over here? Yeah, they haven't had time to sit out, really. No. You, so, these are our super cubes. But we need to rinse these out and wash them for the soup, yeah, right? Yeah, right. So, um, do you need bags? Or? So, this is the um, curry carrot um, soup from Drina Burton's new um, cookbook, Drina's Kind Kitchen. And these are super cubes. And these if you've watched any of our um, storage videos or batch prepping videos, these are two cup silicone molds that we use for um, freezing food. And so this is a curry ginger kabocha squash soup. I demonstrated how to make this on a live earlier um, in the week that we did on Amazon. And you can watch the replay of that. So I have two of Drina's soups, and I have um, three cubes of mine. So what we do is usually I let them set out for. I'm afraid that's going to get knocked off. Here I can move these. Are you done? You're done with the muffins. Yeah, I'm done with the on. muffins. Done with the muffins. So it turns them into these wonderful two cup perfect two cup cubes, and you can just pop them out. And then they go in a Ziploc bag. And actually, four of these cubes fit perfectly in the gallon size freezer bags. So we've got that. There's one. Here's two. And I need to no. free these up so that I can yeah, I'm uh, washing. freeze I'm washing. more soup in them. And then. And we have these on our Amazon store. And then I'll just put my um, label right here on the bag. And if you don't have, I label what I put in the freezer because sometimes I'll forget. Like, what was that, you know? And different, like these two soups can look very, very similar. And so how would I be able to tell those apart? These are two different kinds of soup. And it would be very easy to get them confused. So I always label what I put in the freezer so that I won't get things confused. Because this is a, a curry carrot and this is a curry ginger. And so let me show you. And that is all four of them. And it's just a great way now to store them. And it just makes our freezer so much more organized. So you can lay them flat, but we have plastic storage containers. They're on our Amazon page so that I can do four of four filled bags in the plastic storage containers bookshelf style. that are, yeah, bookshelf style in the freezer. And that works out great. So I'll so. take those away to the computer. I'm going to take those away to the computer, <laughs> to, the, <laughs> to freezer. the freezer. And I, then I, this is my curry ginger. Oh, um, i got to wash your lids too, don't I? Yeah, soup. And this is, um, I used kabocha squash because I, I didn't have my butternut squash from the garden weren't ready yet. And I didn't have any butternut squash, but I had kabocha squash in my freezer. And so that's what I used for it. And this recipe, actually, you sent this recipe out in the newsletter yesterday. Yes. So, um, so this is the curry ginger. It'll, it's the curry ginger butternut squash soup, but I did use kabocha for this particular one. So I'll give you that back. 
and then we'll pop this one open. And we just love the super cubes. They're very high quality silicone. They can, you can bake in them up to 410 degrees. So I actually make my shepherd lentil pie. Was it 410 or 415? Uh, 410 or 415, something. Is it 410 or 415? 415 maybe? You can bake in them. You can bake in them. <laughs> read, read the directions. I think, yeah, I think you're right. I think it is 415. Or, I think even it four, is. or is it 450? No, it's not 450. 415. Uh -uh. Okay. It's like 415. Okay. So, it, you know, my uh, lentil shepherd's pie, I have made individual ones and froze them in them. You can um, go ahead. I didn't uh, pre-bake them, but I froze them in the super cubes, the two cup super cubes, and then popped them out and put them in freezer bags. And then, you know, one person wants to have that, they can pull it out and have that for their meal. And then you can just put it in a small casserole dish and heat it up. And they're working on um, creating some kind of a, um, a casserole dish for us for reheating. Tom, can you hand me a ladle, honey? Oh, a what, what? A ladle. Oh, for you're the ready? Soup. Okay. Yeah, and I'll just show them how we fill these. Thank you for washing these. So, so this is my soup, and I just take it and use a ladle, and it has the measurement in here for two cups. It has the fill line because you need to allow room for it to expand in the freezer, and so. They've built in a fill line for you. Then I just turn it around. I'm just going to capture what's spilled. And also there is a line for uh. one cup. So you can still use these for um, a one cup serving if you want as well, which makes them very versatile. But if you wanted to do like um, small cobblers in here, lentil loaf, um, you know, whatever you want to do. And then I just always, I like to wipe the edges off before I put the lid on. And this is still warm, so I'm not going to put the lid on. You need to let this cool down before you put the lid on so that you don't get a lot of condensation. Oh, I just got to have a drink. I swear that jalapeno powder or the chipotle powder still getting me. Just get in the back of my throat. And so, um, so these just work out really well. Uh, it's just created a lot more organization in our freezer. Oh, I need and, to take these guys back to the freezer. Yeah, take those to the freezer. Okay. And are you still mic'd? I am. Okay. <laughs> I won't say anything bad while I'm gone. <laughs> Well, we'll just be listening to you, what you're doing. So, I think this soup looks like it's really good, you guys, and I think it'll be, um, it'll be a nice soup to have on hand. And I can just add more starch to it if I want to. So, so I'm making soup. It's probably 100 degrees here today, and I'm making soup. But we eat soup year-round. You guys probably do, too, if you're plant-based. Okay, I just got a little too much in this one. And I'm going to leave some out to eat this week as well because I'm just looking for some really gentle foods for my upset GI tract. There. So are you trying to get those precisely to the two cup line? Is that what you're doing? Just trying to, yeah, yeah. because they do, when they freeze, they expand. And so there you go. So that is the super cubes. And when these cool down then, we'll put the lids on them and I will label them and we'll pop these in the freezer and they would be ready tomorrow to take out and put in a bag. That would be great. So. So there you go. I think that's everything. So, um, and Tom's been doing some dishes, so it doesn't look too bad in here. And you want, should we look at the damage? 
Yeah, you can show. And I didn't get the watermelon. There's the potato yet. stand. Well. Oh, I should show them how it, we store the potatoes. Okay. Oh, yeah. If you want to grab me a container All right. from down in there, I can show them. I've got dirty dishes here that I'll let you take away. And potato container. You can just grab. I'll just do these. I don't have to do all of them. I'll just do what I have here. So we just use these Ziploc plastic containers. And I do have some others that are a little bit bigger. I have some Gladware ones that are a little bit bigger. And then we just stand the potatoes up on end because this way the weight of, if you stack them, the weight of the potatoes on top is going to crush the potatoes on the bottom. And so we just do this and that just allows them to stand upright and not get smashed. And we leave the container open because that keeps them from getting all mushy and having too much moisture. And so we just, you know, however many containers it takes, this is how we store them. And I store the Yukon Gold potatoes the same way, just standing up like that. You can stack the Yukon Golds, um, but you really can't stack these because they're just too soft uh, to do that. And then they firm up a bit when they're refrigerated, and that is when they make the best potatoes to air fry. So you can cut them in half and you can score them and put them in the air fryer 400 degrees. I never preheat the air fryer. I just go ahead and put them in the air fryer cold and turn it to 400. It does do its preheat cycle, um, you know, with the potatoes in there and that's fine. It works fine. And then I do them, I air fry them for 20 minutes. That works really well. Unless I have the, um, like the Well Your World, SOS free everything bagel seasoning on them, then I'll do them about 15 minutes. Otherwise that seasoning will um, burn. But if you look at my Instagram account from um, yesterday or last night, I think I posted it this morning, the potato that I made last night for Tom and I with the um, everything bagel seasoning on it and put it in the um, air fryer. And it's so incredibly delicious. Question Tom. Um, how long do you let the, the super cubes cool down before you put them in the freezer until it, it, it's close to room temperature? Yeah, until they're, until they're you know, not creating steam anymore. They yeah. need to get closer to room temperature. You can put the lids on top, just lay the lid on top so stuff doesn't get in them. Yeah, but don't, the but don't seal the lid on because you need all that extra um, moisture to... Otherwise you get all those ice crystals on yeah, the Yeah, you'll get a lot of ice crystals otherwise okay. that you don't Misty want. Blue says, thank you so much for doing the live. She got so much from watching this prep, you know, do all the different things we did this morning. You're welcome. Morning. Thank you for joining and us. Cheryl says, it's been a great live. Um, I thought there was a question up here. Uh, the, okay, the cool down. Oh, here it is. Well, Gina asks, wants to know if you'll take a bite of the muffin for breakfast or is it lunchtime now? Yeah, it's lunchtime now. And so I'm not going to eat a muffin right now. We're actually going to have... Um, Chopped chop Oh, let's see. The mushrooms are done. Oh. Great. I was hoping they would get to see the mushrooms. Here they come. Oh, these are so good, you guys. These are so good. Just, Ooh. they are so delicious. And you say, I usually don't get to eat them, huh? I know, but you can have some today. All right, well, I kind of didn't know about them. There's, you've been holding out, she's been well, holding I've out Well, I've been on testing you. the recipe. Oh, they weren't ready for me, okay. <laughs> you wanted to be perfect for me. That's right, I wanted them to be perfect for you, honey. Of course, that's it. No, okay. those, those are really, really delicious and they smell so good. And you can do so many different things. Okay. with them. And if we figure out a pizza crust, they would be great on pizza okay, as right. well. So I think that's it. That's a wrap for us, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, We're going to finish cleaning up and get ready get for our four o'clock And get show. ready for our four o'clock yeah. At least you've got stuff If you stuff haven't already. already, I know many of you had, give Tammy a thumbs up for all her hard work this morning. We did get one thumbs down. So maybe you two wow. directed somebody here that, that wasn't plant-based or something. It. And yeah. they were just letting YouTube know that it was a wrong channel for them. Wow. But there were about 90 or so folks on my screen that have already 
done a thumbs up. So thank, thank you for you. that. We appreciate that. We hope it was helpful and informative. Okay. These and are still pretty hot. I know they're delicious though. Mm. Mm. Not good. You can't eat this one. No, you can't. Now do you know why I wasn't sharing that Wow. With you? Mm. Okay. And good. this is an unpublished recipe. Mm -hmm. mm. But I just gave them the recipe. Okay. All right, everybody. Yeah, Thank you so, so much for joining us. Come back this afternoon at 4 p.m. Pacific time when we interview Glenn Mercer, the author of Food is Climate. It's going to be really informational, and, yeah. and, and he's a kid. And our moderators that have been hanging in this whole morning, thank you so much. Yeah, we appreciate you guys. I, I know uh, Jesse was bouncing back between Chef AJ's interview with Chef Bravo and us. Oh, she nice. Oh, we were competing with Bravo. Wow. So, anyway. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom. And we help you get, get healthy, healthy and stay healthy one, one meal at, at a time. Bye-bye. See you later, guys. Bye-bye. Everything's upside down. I can't see what button to push. Hold on. I got to come around. Everybody, sorry for the false ending. Okay, we're off.